check, 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 test, test. Do, 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 do. All right, ladies and gentlemen, a little bit of a sound check real quick as we're getting going. And we are live. How are we doing, everybody? Happy Tuesday and welcome to the third Hiker Trash Live. So as I said last week and as everyone kind of, I guess, put the title on it, the first week this is kind of like a, a talk show so if you're not familiar if you didn't tune in last week if you didn't tune in the week before i decided to start doing these live casts i was doing them over on instagram and everybody asked me to move them over here to youtube so i decided to move them over here to youtube be able to answer some of your questions live and be able to bring on some special hiker trash guests some people that i've known throughout my travels on the trail people that i've met in passing other creators authors um, it's been a pretty good time so far and I've had a really fun time doing it. You know, it seems like a lot of things are changing with all of us needing to be stuck inside. I think we're all going to see what's going to happen with that over the next couple weeks. But for now, as long as we're all stuck inside, as long as we can't go anywhere and we all need a little bit of a morale boost, I will continue doing these on Tuesday. So I hope all of you are doing well. I hope you're all healthy. I hope you're all safe and you're not going too crazy stuck inside. Um, hopefully you've been able to get outside a little bit. This past weekend, I actually got outside for a night. Um, I'm lucky enough to have basically national forest and forest uh, completely surrounding where I live. So I was able to walk a block from where I'm at, get on a trail and head into the woods. Did a quick overnight. I shot some footage. I don't know if I'm gonna make a video on that or not. Um, but regardless, hopefully you guys are at least like getting out in your backyard. You know, I see, I've been seeing a lot of people setting up their tent in their backyard and camping in their backyard, which I think is really awesome. So again, hopefully you were all doing well. So how this happened last week and the week before, I'm basically gonna answer a handful of questions over here in the chat box. So if you do have a question, leave it over here. I'll answer a couple and then we're gonna bring in our first guest. So on today's show, I have three special guests. So first up is gonna be Anish Hikes. Uh, for some of you who don't know who that is, Heather Anderson, who also goes by Anish, is a very, she doesn't, she shouldn't need an introduction, but a very well-known long distance hiker. She is a calendar triple crowner. She is an excellent author writing the book Thirst. She was National Geographic's Adventure of the Year. Very, very interesting person, a very sweet individual, and I can't wait to have her on and chat with her. Uh, next up is going to be uh, Elena Osborne. Some of you know her as Tip Tap. She threw hiked the PCT last year and put out some really, really amazing PCT videos. For me, I think kind of changed the game as far as what a vlog could be and what you could actually do with a camera on the trail. If you haven't checked her stuff out, you definitely need to. And then last up on the show today is going to be my buddy Frozen from Outdoor Adventures. So excellent YouTube channel. He threw hiked the AT last year. He's a hammock camper, very experienced camper and backpacker. So we're going to have him on today as well to pick his brain about some stuff that I don't know, maybe sometimes I don't really talk about, especially something like hammocking. I get so many questions, people asking about getting into hammocking, and he is definitely the man to be able to touch on that topic. All right, so let's see if we have any questions over here in the chat box. Last week, you guys told me uh, I was a little bit too dark. It was a little bit too dark in here on my setup, so hopefully that's a little bit more light for you guys. Hopefully that feed's coming through and it looks good. Oh my God, we got so many questions. Let's see, Let's see if we can answer a handful of questions over here. Do, 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 do. Um, it's snowing here today. Yikes, where are you at, Sarah, where it's still snowing? Um, I would assume up north. That, that would be my guess on, on where it could possibly still be snowing. Ooh, here's a good question. Judah asks, what's your favorite book to listen to on the trail? So I typically listen to a lot of podcasts. I listen to a lot of music. But a book 
that I listen to almost every time I do a through hike and I listen to at least once a year is Desert Solitaire by Edward Abbey. One of my favorite books, it really made me fall in love with the Southwest and appreciate the Southwest and public lands and what we have and what we need to preserve. If you've never read any of Edward Abbey's stuff, I highly suggest checking it out and that book in particular. So good stuff. All right, let's see. Do, 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 do. If we have any other questions in here. There's so many questions. Now, some of the questions that I'm gonna pass through, it's because I have answered them in the past multiple times, and probably because I answered them in last week's or the week before. So I'm gonna to try to not re-answer questions that I get. Um, some of them I might, but I'm going to try to not answer as much. Ooh, here's a good one. Um, are there any YouTube hiking channels that you look up to? Yeah, uh, totally. You know, for years, one of the things that inspired me to want to start making videos were two channels in particular. One would be a guy who's been making backpack media for a long time, who is Syntax77. He is one of the old school YouTube content creators, and I've loved his stuff for years. So he's one of the people that really inspired me to want to start doing YouTube videos. And another person would be Will Wood, or most of you know him as Redbeard. He hiked the AT the year before me, put out a ton of great content on gear, on tips and tricks, and basically filmed his entire hike, which was a really big inspiration on what I ended up doing and kind of how my videos um, were structured and, and really what I took a lot of inspiration from. It's funny, in the past, I've now become good friends with him. I told him years ago, um, you probably like my videos because I ripped yours off. So that still holds true. Um, he was a huge inspiration for me. So it looks like I have a super chat. Sarah asks, what pack would you recommend for a first time through hike of the PCT? Don't really want to go ultra light, but stay lightweight. So this is always a hard question to answer. I think that we touched on it a little bit um, on the first Hiker Trash Live with Akuna, but it's kind of, you know, it sounds like a cheap answer, but it's really not. It's the best advice I can give you and the pack that fits you right. You know, you really have to think about how much gear that you're gonna to wanna to carry, uh, how much food storage that you need. Like, right, if you're gonna to go through the Sierra and you need to carry something like a bear can, obviously you're gonna need a bigger pack versus doing something like the AT, where you're not really required to have a bear can unless you stay in a couple particular places on the AT. So it really comes down to you. Um, and then what fits you the best? You know, just because a pack works for me and because it fits me really well, doesn't mean it's gonna work for you and fit you really well. That's why we have so many different types. We have ones with frames, we have frameless, DCF, cell nylon, um, and different literage. So it really comes down to going into maybe your local outfitter or going into an REI if you have one and trying some packs on and seeing what's going to fit you and be the most comfortable for you in the long run. It's really deciding on how much room that you need, what type of features that you want, and what you're going to need while you're out there, and then just find the pack that fits you the best. That's the best advice I can give you. Thanks so much for the super chat. Uh, Hayden also sent in a super chat, and Hayden says, I'm glad to see another q and I have a quirky, a quirky gear question. What are your thoughts on a watch for hikers? Any GPS watches worth the money? I'm sure there's a ton of great GPS watches out there that people use. I have personally never used one, so I can't really speak to that. I uh, can't really give you my 100% honest opinion on a watch that I would recommend. I know a lot of people like the, um, the Garmin Edges. Uh, a lot of people, is it Sunodo? Uh, Sunodo, the, basically the, the altitude watches. So a lot of people use those. I have personally never used one. We did a small article over on my website, theoutdoorevolution.com, where we had a, a contributor do an entire article on trail navigation, talking about GPS units, talking about using certain apps. So I would highly suggest checking that out, just to kind of give you a little bit of a, um, maybe something to think about if you're thinking about getting a watch or carrying a GPS or using something like an app. I've always used a paper guide, uh, maps, 
or a, uh, a phone app like Guthook, which is what I use on my phone when I'm doing hikes. So that's what I use. But again, if you wanna see some recommendations on GPS, I would go check that article out because there's people that know way more about that than I do. So thanks again for the super chat, Hayden. All right, so I am going to go ahead and dial up my first guest. Let me see, let me see. And while we are waiting for her to jump in here, I'm gonna answer another question. Bear with me, folks. All right, so uh, a fun one, someone just said, do I use beard oil? No, I use beard balm. I used to use oil, then I started using kind of like the, the gel, the balm. Um, it just works better for me, kind of lets you shape your beard a little bit better, but I don't use any on trail. I only use beard care whenever I am off the trail, like right now. But when I'm on trail, I just let it go all natural. I let it get dirty. I let it uh, get moisturized by hopefully some condensation. If it's wet, that's how I do it. All right, so our first guest is just now joining us. Let me get her up here real quick. Bear with me, folks. Technology is hard sometimes. Um, I can see her, but you can't. Let's see, let's see. Oh. All right. Howdy. Hello, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you? Excellent, excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, all right, so this is the first question that I'm gonna ask you because there's so many different pronunciations of it. I am almost 100% sure it's a niche. Am I right? Uh, I've kind of. Yeah, I've always said a niche, but I've heard it pronounced Anish. Um, Anish, which I, I don't think that that's right at all. That's definitely not right. <laughs> or um, let's see, what is the other one? Um, how do you pronounce your tongue? I pronounce it Anish. Anish. Yeah. Gotcha. Anish would also be correct, I guess, because it's short for Anishinaabe. Um, oh. So Anishinaabe is a Native American people group of the upper Midwest. And my great great grandmother was Anishinaabe. That's so awesome. It got shortened to Anish by other hikers. But I guess technically it would be Anish, but I say Anish because that's Anish. Everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, Anish. <laughs> to settle a long dispute between a lot of hikers. <laughs> yes, yes, I've heard a lot of things um, over the years, and I've my favorite is every time somebody calls me Amish, and I'm like, no, that's not even the right letter. <laughs> like, it's an N. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So, so then that's where the trail name comes from, because that was going to be my first question yeah. for you. Yeah, that is where the trail name comes from. Right yeah. on. So um, it's excellent to have you on here. Thanks for jumping on. Um, yeah. It, it's been fun to have so many different people on, whether they are hiking creators like, like YouTubers or photographers or uh, authors. And, you know, we had, uh, I think, a, a shared friendship, uh, Jennifer Farr Davis. We had her on on mm -hmm. the first one. So it's great to have you on here. And I know that you wrote an excellent, excellent book. Um, Thirst, which is definitely want to jump into that today, and I'm sure that there's folks out there that definitely want to hear um, kind of about the whole, you know, for me, I always want to ask people about the creation process of like actually taking something from concept, you know, adventure to concept, to actually delivering something. Right. Um, so that's definitely something I, I want to talk about. But for all the folks out there that might not know who you are, which I would, at this point, I would think that that would be, most people that are going to be watching my channel, I would think, also follow along with you. Um, if you're not folks, follow along. Um, but if you want to give a little bit of a, a background to uh, your hiking history. Um, sure. Uh, so I started hiking uh, through hiking in 2003. And that was uh, my first through hike on the Appalachian Trail. And uh, I went on to complete the Pacific Crest Trail in 2005 and the Continental Divide in 2006. And then I took a nice long hiatus and took up ultra marathon running uh, and then decided I missed the mountains and went back to through hiking. And so in 2013, I hiked PCT for the second time. And uh, my intent was to see if I could see how fast I could hike the trail yeah. um, in a through hiker style. And um, I set the 
self supported fast in time on PCP that year. Had you, and then, to, to kind of like veer off, had you planned on doing that or was it something that, I, I've talked to a lot of people that have held FKTs and it seems like there's a, a, a mass majority of, of hikers that don't really plan on doing it. They're kind of like halfway into the trail or they're like close to the end and they maybe know what the current record is. And then they think to themselves like, oh wow, if I kind of speed it up a little bit, I might actually break the record. Is it? Did you go into that hike thinking that you would do that or is that something that just kind of developed as you were on the trail? No, it was the full on intent before I hiked it was to set that uh, record or to see if it was even possible for me to do so. Um, gotcha. I didn't really think that I could, but I was intending to try. Um, and so two years after that, I went and set the self-supported fast some time on the Appalachian Trail. And then um, in 2017, I hiked the Continental Divide Trail for the second time. And then in 2018, I threw hiked the AT, the PCT, and CDT in an eight-month period of time. And then I've done a bunch of other shorter through hikes mixed in there when I had some spare time. Um, <laughs> so the you had trail. spare time. <laughs> right, spare time around that. So the Bartram Trail, the Wonderland Trail, um, Oregon Desert Trail, um, most of the Colorado Trail and John Muir Trail. Um, yeah, so. It's one hell of a yeah. resume. <laughs> yeah, I've been hiking pretty much nonstop for a long time, except for a brief break where I was only running. Yeah, it's crazy. That's like I, I find that one of the most fascinating parts of you is that you basically started. I mean, I think that that's a lot of through hikers, right? Like through hikers, once you start your first trail, you get kind of hooked, you get addicted, and then mm -hmm. you just keep going. But like, you not only kept going and just like doing trails, you like kept like hardcore stepping it up like <laughs> every notch possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a my mom likes to joke about how just from the moment I started walking, I had two skis, which were full tilt and sleep, and there was nothing in between. And so I guess I've been like that since a toddler. It's just like, go. Yeah. Nice. So whenever you, um, whenever you put together, had you planned on, on, on riding Thirst when you went out to, or, or is it something that, because, because you, it, Thirst, I, I know, um, I'll be 100% honest, I actually haven't finished it. I'm horrible with like finishing books. I'm so bad with uh -huh. it. Um, I'm always like, I'm an audio book person, like put me on trail, put some headphones in, like where I can listen and yeah, I'll consume uh -huh. all of it. But I'm probably a lot like you, like just sitting down and taking a second to like do something. It's hard, like whenever you're just a super right. active person, you wanna be active all the time. So I know yeah. that um, Thirst really came out of, you know, being back on the PCT and, mm -hmm. and, and, and doing what you did, did you have the concept of that you wanted to write the book whenever you went out there or was it just something that kind of developed afterwards? It developed afterwards. So my intention was just to hike um, and to see what I was capable of. Um, there was a lot going on in my life leading up to that um, decision to start an FKT and um, I, I honestly just thought that the only people that would be interested would be like my mom and my friends. Um, and so obviously that wasn't the case. And as soon as I got off the trail, the number one question I got was, are you going to write a book? Yes. And I was just kind of like, well, sure, maybe someday. <laughs> um, when I retire and I stop hiking so much, that was, you know, kind of my joke. Um, and uh, in an interesting sort of way, like, part of how I dealt with my post-hike depression was the journal. Because I had taken a little bit of journaling and notes on the trail. Like I'm a, I am used to be like a hardcore journaler on all my few hikes. And obviously when you're hiking 40 something miles a day, you're not really that interested in writing that much. Right, yeah. Uh, so I didn't journal much, um, but I had some notes. And so that was really how I processed the hike and the post-hike depression was journaling a lot about my experience. And then that just sat um, for years until I finally just decided that it was time and I was ready to write a book, and um, so I wrote a book in like six weeks. <laughs> I find that, wow, that's really fast. Six weeks? Yeah, it was like the FKT of book writing. <laughs> <laughs> nice, so my wife had, whenever you whenever you released it, my wife had read it and, and wrote, wrote a review on, on her website um, and just absolutely loved it. So that's an, I'll definitely have to let her know that it, it only took you six weeks to write that, which is, that's mind blowing to me. Um, yeah just you know thinking from a creation standpoint it's amazing to me that 
most long distance hikers I know, like a, a pretty big, I won't say most, but a pretty big percentage, I feel like there's a lot of creation that comes from the trail and comes from like mm -hmm. battling that post trail depression and that like, that having to blend back into like normal life after you've been out on trail for so long. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, that's so interesting, whether it's a YouTube channel or, or shooting videos or writing a book that it, it mm -hmm. brings that out of you. Um, it's it's pretty amazing yeah. how, how the trail can do that for you. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. I guess going forward, so I, one thing I wanna, as you and I chatted a little bit last night, um, I am, since I've been a kid, a massive um, National Geographic fan, like always. Like mm -hmm. I'll, I'll watch anything that National Geographic produces. So to find right. out that you became the National Geographic adventure of the year how did that happen exactly how do you do you get nominated for that did they just like get a hold of you do you apply for that how does that work it was all rather mysterious and surprising <laughs> <laughs> um so basically i got an email in probably january yeah. of 2019 saying you're being considered or you're not you are nominated and you're being considered to be a national geographic adventure of the year and I was like, okay, whatever. Um, and the, 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 the background between, behind that is my sister was dying of cancer at that time. And so like, I honestly didn't care. I was like, fine, whatever. Like that wasn't anything on my radar. And, sure. um, and so then uh, maybe a month and a half or so later, um, I got an email saying that they wanted to, they were interviewing the candidates and would I have time to talk and I was like okay fine and by this point in time my husband and I had moved into our car and we're like on the road um and so like I remember giving the interview to this guy in like a Walmart parking lot somewhere in East Texas <laughs> and then like from, that Nation was that. And I from didn't National Geographic else. yeah nice. and I didn't hear <laughs> anything else until literally like February 20 like 7th or 28th and it was announced on March 1st or something like that or it was March announced March or February 28th, I think, because my book came out March 1st. Yeah. And like, they basically were just like, oh, by the way, tomorrow we're going to announce that you're a National Geographic Adventure of the Year. And I'm like, oh, they're like, we, you know, whatever. And I'm like, oh, okay, great. I'm <laughs> like literally about ready to drive into uh, Big Bend National Park. I'm not going to have cell phone service for like days. That's awesome. So it was such a like weird, like I had no idea it was coming really because I mean, partially because I was distracted, but also partially because they didn't really say you are. It was always just like, well, you're, you're you might nominated. be, yeah, might yeah. be. And I was like, okay, at some point they'll tell me. And it was like literally like wow. a day of warning or something. So that is so it amazing. It was a big surprise. Yeah. yeah. So with that, like, this is like the, this is the creator geek in me. Like the, I'm a national geographic. Like, do they, they present you do they present you with something? Is there an award? Are you are you, mm -hmm. you published? No, they're just like this person. It's is... just that article, that article that I gave in the Walmart parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's so hiker trash too. Like yeah, an interview for National Geographic in a Walmart parking lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure because we slept in that Walmart parking lot that night too. Like it was like okay, I just gave my interview to National Geographic. Let's go buy dinner and then we're that in is our truck here. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, it was um, there's the article, and obviously there's to look about it like online and that sort of thing. But there's no like physical award or, or ceremony or anything like that. Or if there was, I didn't find out about it. <laughs> maybe maybe it's yeah. Maybe it's whenever party. you were in Big Ben and they tried to yeah. to get a hold of you. Like, hey, exactly. by the way, uh, you want to come uh, accept this award? <laughs> if you right. don't, yeah. if you don't maybe. respond in the next 24 hours, we can't do it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. So um, one of the things that has kind of been, I, I feel like, a, an underlining theme on Hiker Trash Live is talking to other creators and authors and, and, and hikers about kind of some of the, the lesser known trails because I have really spent a lot of time in the last couple of years, um, one, putting off the CDT because like I'm, I'm trying to kind of give more attention to all of these smaller trails because I just think it's amazing mm -hmm. how many how many trails that we have in this country whether it's a, a national scenic mm -hmm. trail or a recreational trail or just like the smaller state run ones that are in people's backyards so um I know that what was it last year that you did the Bartram mm -hmm. 
So yeah. yeah, so for everyone out there, and it's funny, over the last couple episodes, the Bartram's been kind of brought up. Jen was talking about possibly doing the Bartram. Um, oh, yeah. I think that Legend had brought up the Bartram. So uh -huh. um, do, you, do you want to explain to folks kind of where it's at, what it is, and um, your experience on it? Sure. Uh, so I did the Bartram in November of last year, and um, we had originally planned to do kind of a bigger hike. There's a lot of shorter trails in that kind of corner of the world. So this is Northern Georgia, Southeastern uh, North Carolina. So it's uh, uh, very close to the Appalachian Trail. So you've got this web of trails down there, like the Bartram and the Foothills Trail, and obviously the AT and the Penhody and the Benton Mackay. There's like all these like shorter uh, trails down there. And so we had kind of wanted to weave together something and we ended up just doing the Bartram. And, I think we calculated that it was approximately like 115 to 120 miles. Perfect. And yeah, it was a great, it was great. We did it in early November, which is really good hiking down there. It was cold at night, but beautiful fall color and everything. And so it starts, or we started south and like hiked to north. Um, so we started at the southern terminus, which is just at this bridge over the river at the Georgia South Carolina border, or I think it's Georgia and South Carolina. You don't go into South Carolina, you just stay on the Georgia side. But anyway, it's just kind of a random starting location. And then the first several miles is all along the Chattooga River, which is claimed to fame because the river and deliverance. Yeah. And so we hiked through there uh, our first day, our first evening, and camp. And um, and then you proceed on up uh, through Raven Balls in Georgia, and you have views over to the Appalachian Trail. You're actually really close to the AC. And then um, you crisscross the AT, so you come onto the AT near Wyabal, you follow the AT for six or seven miles, and you veer off, and you go down um, near Fontana Lake, and then you ascend the south, I guess it's the southern slope of Chihuahual. Oh, okay. So Chihuahual is yep. the big, horrible climb out of the NOC, oh, yeah. northbound on the AT. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the jump up, I believe. Yes, exactly. So you ascend the other side of that mountain, and I've now been up that mountain from three directions, and it's a terrible climb no matter which way you go, <laughs> I can assure you. Um, it's a bad climb. Anyway, and so the Barton Trail ends at the top of the Chilo Balls, and there's no sign at all. We were talking about that yesterday. There's no sign yeah, yeah. telling you that you completed the Barton Trail or anything like that. I know, and I feel like and then you have to hike out. it's such an important thing. That's that's kind of how I felt on the Penhody in 18. It's it's like there's just a little bitty dinky sign that you wouldn't even know, like unless you were really looking for it, you wouldn't know it was there. And then, yeah, I had right. to hike like, was it almost three miles, like two and a half miles out to a random road yeah. out in the middle of nowhere to get picked up at like this old right. cemetery. <laughs> yeah. And it's yeah. As, uh, as three hikers, it's not very auspicious place. Yeah, as three hikers, I feel like it's so important. It's like you'll you'll hike thousands of miles as long as like you get something at the end, like to to be able to celebrate at like some sort of little monument or a sign or a, 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 yeah. a border something. Uh, so that, that's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that like my, my flip flop hike uh, that I've done, that's been kind of the thing was like trying to find something meaningful to end the mat, even if it's just like a specific tree. Yeah. Like that's where I finished my calendar triple crown was at a tree. And I was like, <laughs> I'm going to go over to that tree. And that way, when I finish, I have to touch the tree, like, just so that, like, there was, like, a point, you know, it wasn't just, like, okay, here I am, you know. Well, so if, it, if you went yeah. back out there right now, would you remember the exact tree? Oh, yeah. It's a very yeah. memorable it's tree? Actually, well, it's in the city of Grand, so oh, okay. you haven't done the CET yet, but, like, it's in the city, so it's... No, but I've been to Grant's actual... multiple times. I've, okay, I've hiked yeah. through Grant's. Okay, so where the actual CDT comes... If you're going south on the CET, you merge with the, uh, the historic Route 66. Yeah. And it's basically where you can go out to, like, the Walmart and the hotels. Yeah. And there's that tree that's in, like, that little diamond median. That's the tree you're so, talking about? <laughs> that's the tree. That's the tree. I always tell everybody. So that was the thing. I, like, literally walked over across the road to the median to touch the tree on my way <laughs> in the spring so that in the fall I had to walk there. So there was a a point. <laughs> I, I lived in New Mexico for two and a half years and um, okay. I, I've, I've done basically all of the CDT in New Mexico. So I always tell people okay. my favorite section so far, my favorite section of the CDT is whenever you get to walk next to the prison going out of grants. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where people yep. are just like playing basketball in the yard staring at you like 
Like, right. I just want to, like, please take me with you. Um, right. <laughs> such a exactly. weird feeling. Such a bizarre thing. Of all the weird things, like, that and the, the exotic animals do on the uh, PCT, I think, are, like, the weirdest things. Oh, like yeah, that. yeah. The, oh, the, yeah. the little wildlife zoo thing. Right. Yeah. Where the, like, tiger and bear and stuff are at. Yeah. I don't know if that's still there. Yeah, uh, it was there in 18. And there was, I only saw one animal, and it was a big, like, Kodiak bear. That was there because oh, i yeah. sit there and kind of like yep. talk to him through the fence for a minute um yeah such a bizarre thing the things that you'll see on long distance trails and the things that you'll run into did you get to yeah. meet doug on the cdt anytime that you were out there in the gila wilderness I don't... oh i don't think so okay no. there's a is that the guy that lives out there yeah, there's a hermit that lives i had an excellent experience with him and have some really great stories from spending time with him in 2017 so i always ask people that have done that section of the CDT, like, have you met Doug? <laughs> I, I, I would look for him. I'm always, like, wondering if I will meet him out there, and I haven't yet, so. He always feels like if he's supposed to talk to, because he's a hermit, and if, you know, he's supposed right. to be by himself, but if he's supposed to talk to people, like, the universe lets people know that he's there and lets him know that mm. people are there. He said that sometimes, like, he'll go an entire season, and he knows people come by, but he'll never hear him, right. he'll never see him, because he's not supposed to, so. He's a very right. interesting, interesting, awesome person. But um, yeah. so yeah, so thanks for sharing about the Bartram Trail. I mean, that's to let everybody know sure. out there that like there, you don't have to go out and do a, a, a couple thousand mile through hike. I mean, it's fun, but like you can go out mm -hmm. and find these smaller trails in your backyard and they're in every state. There's such a massive list of all of these smaller trails. And Oh yeah, it's especially a, if you start including like the National Recreation Trail, yeah. which are, some of them are open to bicycles and stuff too. And that's been kind of my my thought process since I finished the Triple Crown in 2018 has been what other trails can I do? Because totally. I feel like that somewhere in that 100 to 300 mile range is like an awesome oh, yeah. size because you can do it without like upending your entire life, but you're out there long enough that you still get that immersive experience. Yeah. And Trails of that length are everywhere. Like you said, there's like in every state, you can find a trail like that basically and, anywhere you go. I also think something like right around 300 miles is like, it's enough to get your trail legs under you, but not enough to start mm -hmm. breaking you down, which is like, exactly. you still feel amazing whenever you get off the trail and like you're ready to still hike. Right. <laughs> which is a nice yeah, feeling. Yeah, totally. So, um, so quick fire questions. Um, first off, uh, if, everything clears up which it will we'll all get back to some form of normal what uh what's next for you what 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 do you kind of have in, in the books what are you planning on well our big plan this year was actually to go to japan and do some hiking there yeah. um so even if uh things clear up i don't know that international travel yeah. is going to be likely so we didn't really come up with a plan b because we weren't expecting a pandemic yeah, so totally. um <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So I don't know. Um, probably depending on when domestic travel and stuff opens, we'll try to locate some of those one to three hundred mile trails wherever we are. I have some work out in the Pacific Northwest in the fall, um, so hopefully we'll be out there hiking. I, I would like to climb some of the mountains out there again. Yeah. Because um, I miss it. So um, we'll see. I don't know. I have. I'm kind of. That's like the hardest thing for me right now because I'm such a a planner and I always have a plan and I have a list of adventures and I'm spreadsheets and I just haven't done any of that because it's too disheartening to plan things and then be like oh we can't do these so yeah so I don't know we'll just wait and see I guess but as soon as we can go international again we're definitely going to go on to Japan and do anything we plan to do there nice excellent that sounds so fun I've always wanted to go to Japan one of these days yeah. I'll get over there we'll all get over there eventually <laughs> yeah eventually um, so for all the gear geeks watching and all people that always want to know like hike specific stuff, um, number one, uh, cold soak or stove? Uh, I do both. It depends on the trail and the, and the time. Like, so on the PCT, I never carry a stove because I just don't want to be that person that accidentally starts a fire. Yeah. You know, like I just don't want anything flammable with me. Right. Like I don't want to be responsible in any way. And it's hot enough. It doesn't matter. I don't mind cold soak. Um, but definitely, like, in colder months or when it's wetter, like, I like my hot coffee in the morning. Mm, um, yeah. So I used to only cold soak for years, and then I was like, oh, the hot coffee is really nice. So, so then what is yeah. your, what's your favorite go-to 
you could have it every night on the trail. What's your favorite cold soaking meal, number one? Mm, I think the cold soaking, I used to just do the straight up like dehydrated refried beans because then you can add, you know, spices and you can add avocado. Like I always pack avocados out of town, yeah. um, um, cheese, whatever. You can kind of dress it up however you want. Um, and a lot of times I just do no, no soap, no, no, whatever. Like I just end up eating things like cheese and salami and stuff like that, right. where I don't even have to soak. There's like no waiting period between right. sitting and down and like food in my face. Right. Like, <laughs> that's really how hungry. I feel a lot of times on the trail. It's like, yeah, whatever I can just yeah. jam in real quick. That's all I really care right. about. So yeah, there's, there's been literally nights where it was like, I could wait for this or I could just eat a bag of Swedish fish for dinner. And <laughs> yes, the Swedish fish won. They win. Yeah, I was like, always. I don't want to deal with this. <laughs> Just want calories now. So then if you're carrying a stove, what's your what's your go-to cooked meal? Do you have like a specific meal that, that you always kind of want to eat on the trail? I'm a really big fan of pad thai, like Thai food mm. on the trail. Um, I usually go with the stuff from good to go meals. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm going to actually get a prepared meal, thing like that, because um, they do a lot of gluten-free and I can't eat gluten. So ah. um, almost all of their meals at that parameter so there's way less chance of me getting sick if i'm gonna do a commercially um, packaged meal otherwise um if i'm making it myself a lot of times i just dehydrate leftover leftovers from home and then just rehydrate them on the trail have you ever had um, poor man's pad thai where like you take ramen noodles and put like peanut butter and and hot sauce in it it's awful but... i've done <laughs> i've done stuff kind of like that but not exactly like I'm a pretty good cook, and I'm kind of fussy about my food, so, like, I don't know. I, I don't think I have actually ever eaten ramen, and I might be the only hiker who has never eaten ramen. I will I, I will only eat ramen if it's, like, a life-or-death situation. It takes a lot for right. me to choke down ramen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. So, what um what shoe are you currently hiking in? What's your, what's your shoe of choice, make and model? Uh... Uh, I've been hiking, like last year I, I started wearing the Ultra Tim, mm-hmm. uh, which is like their newer trail shoe. I used to wear a Lone Peak. I mean, I still wear the Lone Peak, um, but I didn't really like the way the Lone Peak, I think it was the three, fit my foot. So then I tried the Tim and I really liked the Tim. Yeah, so that's what I've Right been. now I've got both Tim's and Lone Peak that I've been hiking in. Nice. Yeah. Um, pack. What's your pack of choice? What are you, uh, what are you using these days? Or if you were going to go... If you're gonna go do the PCT again right now, what pack would you carry? So my kind of all-around pack is the Gossamer Gear Gorilla, oh. and um, I found that to be the most versatile for me. Uh, I really like how durable their packs are because I'm not done with my gear. Yeah. Like, I just throw it around and sit on it and drag it through the brush and whatever. Um, and then like when I'm doing like a higher capacity hike, so like my winter hiking and desert hiking, I've used the Mariposa, which is just bigger version of the yeah, I know a lot of people or the that, silverback which is durable too but, yeah you know. i know a lot of people that love the mariposa that and the kumo seem to be like two of the most popular yeah. packs like especially out on the pct i get those seem like the yeah. packs for the pct almost yeah definitely i i don't know how you fit a bear can in a kumo though maybe that's just me i don't know that's why i go with the gorilla because it's bigger and i can get the bear can it'd in be there. Hard. i can't get it in my kumo yeah it'd be hard i guess you just strap it on the outside i don't know right so, then you have to worry about like yeah. the weird weight shift. right and i've lost a bear can full of my food down a slope before and it just it, it always goes in the pack now oh. like i got it back i didn't die i didn't you know starve to death i got it back but it was very it's a very frightening thing when you're hiking and all of a sudden your food is going down the hill without you no <laughs> i need that <laughs> nice I, I haven't experienced that one yet i'm, I'm sure it's It'll eventually happen. I'll, I'll have to tighten those straps and check them a lot. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, right on. Well, thank you so much for uh, for spending some time yeah. with us and chatting with us, and and hope that uh, everything clears up. You can get back on trail. We can all get back on trail. And yes, hopefully. Yeah, looking forward to yeah. seeing what you're you're doing coming up over the next couple of years. It's always fun to follow along with your stuff. So. Yeah. Yep. We'll see what happens as soon as we can get out again. All right. Well. Cool. Take care. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, no problem. See ya. See ya. Bye-bye. All right, folks. So, big thanks to Heather for jumping on here with us. Sorry, I'm trying to mess with all my stuff. So, big thanks for her coming on. If you guys have not checked her stuff out, 
definitely um, check out her book Thirst. It's from what I <laughs> from what I've read. I haven't read the whole thing yet. It's phenomenal. Uh, Snuggles has read it I think twice at this point and did a review of it. Excellent. But but big thanks to her for coming on and uh, and chatting with us. So um, I'm going to try to not go as long on these live cast as I did last week. I think last week I went to three hours, which was insane. And I do not plan on doing that again this time. Um, I don't plan on it. We'll see what happens because we still have some awesome guests to come on. Um, but why we are having a little bit of a break between guests, I'm going to go ahead and answer a handful of questions over here in the chat box. So if you have a question for me, go ahead and throw it over there and I will try to answer it um, as they're coming in. Let me go a little back here and see if I can, ooh, chili and lime ramen. I've heard chili and lime ramen is pretty good. I had a buddy that hiked the PCT in 2018 and that's like basically all he ate all the time. So that was his go-to. Uh, someone said I'm craving ramen in lockdown. <laughs> Ugh. S spam and ramen is a Hawaii staple. Ugh, pass. Both of those do not sound good to me. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Like I said, if anybody has any questions, throw them over here and I'll try to answer them. Um, I I'm trying to answer some questions that I haven't answered before. So if, if you feel like you're putting your question up there, it's maybe not getting answered or I keep passing over it. It might be because I've answered it in last week's or the week before. So definitely go check those videos out if you have not yet. I do want to give a quick shout out. I was recently on a podcast um, called the Back the Backpacking Experience Podcast. Uh, there is an awesome YouTube channel here on YouTube, obviously, called Backcountry Banter. Devin puts together some phenomenal content and recently he started a podcast and I was on there this past week. It came out on Sunday, but for anybody that you know has heard my story a ton of times, you've heard how I've got my trail name, you've heard the trails that I've hiked, you've heard my entire story. This was really an episode where we talked about some topics that I've never really touched on before, talking about um, what I've done in the last year to really give back to public lands and what I'm going to be doing going forward to give back to trail associations and national parks and national forest and what I think that we need to do as a community of long distance hikers, of outdoor enthusiasts to protect and give back and make sure that we are respecting public lands. So if that's something that you're interested in, if you're interested in hearing me ramble about something that's not backpacks and it's not shoes and it's not the AT and the PCT, definitely go check that out. Um, it was a great time. It's one of the best conversations I've had in quite some time. So, so go check that out. Uh, quick little plug for, for backcountry exposure there. Um, all right, let's see what we have. Um, somebody says chafing, how to cure the burn. I've never been a big chafer. Uh, I have never really had to deal with chafing on the trail. Um, I know that my wife is definitely, she has had chafing problems in the past and she always carries a little stick of body glide. So body glide is this awesome product that I used to use years ago when I was racing triathlon. I would take body glide and I would basically glide my my wrist and and my my ankles because when I wore a wetsuit in the water I would need to peel that off quick to go into the next transition and then I noticed that a lot of hikers were using them taking body glide and putting it on the bottom of their foot before putting on a sock to not get blisters I know hikers that basically just lather themselves up with body glide so that's what I would suggest checking out um, but again I can't really speak to that because I personally have never really dealt with any chafing problems. So let's see what else we have. Yeah, somebody said body glide, bro. Body glide, it's, it's where it's at, I'm telling you. Um, lots of resupply options. Uh, somebody said any shorter trails with lots of resupply options. There are so many trails. This is what I would suggest for anybody out there that's maybe looking for a trail in your backyard, something that's down the road, something that's in your state. Um, or maybe you live on the East Coast and you want to go out to the West Coast and hike a trail, but you don't have four to six months to spend on the PCT. 
go on, just go to Google and type in long distance trails. And there should be a Wikipedia page. And that Wikipedia page has this massive list of every single long distance trail that is basically in the US right now, whether it's a National Scenic Trail, whether it's something that someone has routed, uh, whether it is 50 miles to 2,000 miles. It'll tell you the mileage, it'll tell you kind of the vicinity of where it's at, the towns that it runs through. That's what I would suggest doing. Um, they're just, there are so many good trails. And most of those will go through small towns and small communities, post offices, so you do have options for resupply. So that's what I would do. I'd go check that out and you can find some really excellent information. Um, somebody said, what is your go-to hot meal on the trail besides couscous? So I am kind of old school when it comes to, you know, hiker trash cuisine on the trail. I will still eat nor rice sides. So really cheap meal. You can usually pick them up for about a buck, buck and a half at grocery stores, at gas stations, at Dollar Generals. And you know, it's just a nor rice side. What a lot of people use to fix as a side with their mashed potatoes and their chicken or something. I'll take that, I'll add some tuna into it, maybe spice it up a little bit with some hot sauce or something. And yeah, that usually gets me by. It's easy, it's cheap. But lately, there is a meal company that I've never been big into commercially packaged food like Mountain House Meals, like um, Backcountry, uh, what is it? Uh, Backcountry Pantry, um, Backpackers Pantry. I've never really been into those. I think, personally, I think they're a little bit overpriced for what you get. Um, and I just think that I can get more calories and something cheaper. But lately I was really turned on to a, uh, a company called Evergreen Adventure Foods. And the reason I really like their stuff is because it is, um, it's, it's very whole food. So everything's prepared in a small kitchen, then it's dehydrated, then it's put in the packaging. And then the packaging is hundred percent compostable. So one of the things that I've never liked about those backpackers pantries is you eat the meal and it's fine and it's easy to make, but then you're left with this big chunk of plastic and metal and dyes and stuff like that. And if you've been out on trails a lot, you see a lot of those sitting in fire pits, sitting at shelters, sitting at campsites because people leave them behind, they try to burn them and it's just really hurting the planet. It's hurting our public lands. Well, the great thing about this Evergreen Adventure Foods is it's 100% compostable. I actually just bought a handful more of them. Uh, the last thing that I ate on the AT the night before I got off was one that a friend turned me on to and I loved it. So I went ahead and bought some more of them. Just if I'm going out for a quick overnight, if I'm gonna go just for a small section hike and I'm not gonna have to resupply a bunch of times, it's something I would definitely throw in my pack. But you know, if I'm gonna go out and do a through hike, chances are I want it to be a little bit cheaper so I'm gonna grab something like a Nor Rice Side, couscous, instant mashed potatoes, something I can pick up really cheap at a grocery store or a convenience store and then just get a bunch of, right? Because you can buy, buy them for a buck and a half. So you can buy a ton of meals for under $10 versus buying like a backpacker's pantry that might be $10 for one meal. So that's typically what I eat and what I've been eating lately. All right, let's see if there's any other questions coming in. Um, it cost a lot. Yeah, and it's exactly what uh, Mountain Coffee Outdoor said. Freeze-dried meals might taste pretty good. I honestly don't think a lot of them taste pretty good. <laughs> uh, but they sure cost a lot for the calories that they provide. I 100% agree. Oh, I have a quick super chat from Lightwalker that says, I've learned so much from you and wish I could contribute more. Well, thank you for the super chat. Thanks for contributing what you did and um, appreciate the kind words. Thank you very much. Um, every little bit helps. Uh, it helps me keep producing videos and making content. So, oh, Kyle Hates Hiking is in here. Uh, shout out to Kyle Hates Hiking. If you haven't checked his videos out, super funny. Um, he likes to make little jokes on me every once in a while, which I find insanely hilarious. Um, <laughs> so what's up, Kyle, man? We're going to get you on here one of these weeks and uh, let you talk about how much you really hate through hiking. 
Go check his videos out, folks. They are very, very funny. Um, all right. So I think that looks like just about every question. Um, oh, Kyle had a question. Uh, what's the craziest thing you've seen people do for ultralight? I mean, I, I, honestly, I think it's crazy to not filter your water. If you have a filter like the Sawyer Squeeze or something that weighs, what, two ounces, two and a half ounces, and you're choosing not to take that because you're gonna drink water right out of a water source, and most, most through hikers that I know that don't carry a filter, I know have gotten Giardia at least once, if not twice. Uh, I know a hiker, I won't give any names, but there was a hiker, a, a friend of mine that was out on the PCT, same time I was, and he got Giardia twice. Um, <laughs> so it's two ounces, throw it in your pack. You never know what kind of water sources you're gonna come up with. So I think that that would be one of the craziest things. I know that doesn't sound really crazy to a lot of people, but to me, it just doesn't make sense so please carry a filter folks don't get giardia it sucks getting like it coming out both ends coming out your mouth coming out you know the other end of you not fun on trail it's not fun whenever you're like sitting at home on your couch it's definitely not fun when you're hiking a bunch of miles every day and you're uncomfortable and you're wet and you're hot uh gross <laughs> so let's go ahead and see if our second guest is hanging out and ready to talk. Um, hold on just a second, folks. Let's see, somebody said, what's your favorite beer? Ooh, I have a lot of favorite beers. One of my favorite breweries in the country is definitely Southern Tier out of um, upstate New York. That is one of my favorite breweries and lately a uh, historic brewing company here in Flagstaff makes some pretty awesome beer. So I don't know, all beer is good. I don't know if I really have a favorite beer. Whatever is readily available whenever a beer sounds good is the best beer. So let's go ahead and bring in our second guest. Let me get her all set up here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, most of you that follow me have probably followed this young lady in the last um, last handful of months since she started putting out some really amazing content here on YouTube. And for me, kind of changed the game as far as uh, what it means to make a hiking video. Um, my next guest is, oh, over here, <laughs> Elena Hello. Osborne. What's going on? Hey, yeah. How are uh, you? It's morning here, it's, a, it's Wednesday, Wednesday morning here in uh, New Zealand. Uh, good morning. <laughs> howdy, howdy. It's going good. How are you going? Good, good. It's uh, trying to get a bunch of stuff done this morning and get ready to do this. It, it's weird. I've been doing this for like three weeks now, but I'm still like, I forget that I'm going to do it. So I like literally hopped out of the shower right before I started this and I'm running here trying to get everything set up and get the, get all the tech set up. But yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I'm, I'm surprised. I, um, I'm glad and also surprised that I got up on time <laughs> and I heard um, Anish speak and man, she's cool. And her book is, yeah, incredible. So, so, so you finished you it. Should, you should finish. You should finish a book. Yeah, but I but I did cheat. I did listen to the audio book. Um, but I did I did get well, through it. When it first it was, came out, really she good. hadn't done the audio book yet. So I picked up, I, I picked up a copy of it, and like I started reading it. And I'm just I'm I've been like that my entire life. Like it doesn't matter what book it is. I'll get through about half yeah. of it, and then I'll set it down, and like I won't pick it up for like a year. Um, yeah, yeah. That. No, my goal, my goal this year was to read a book a month because I'm just like that too, and so far so good. So yeah, you got you got yeah, the awesome man. banana shirt on again. Yeah, yeah. I I mean it's it's just for this, you know. Every time I talk to you, it's like tradition now. So yeah, I have gotta to have the banana shirt. Don this. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty killer. <laughs> so um, for folks that out there that might not know who this is, um, trail name is Tip Tap. And last year she hiked the PCT, which was your first through hike, yeah? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And um, we actually met out on the trail, which uh, is, <laughs> it can get into kind of a funny story, but um, we met on trail. And after I got back from my trip out to PCT days, after she finished, she started producing some really amazing content on YouTube. And... It's funny because, you know, I think I told you the first time we talked, 
I personally don't consume a lot of other people's media because I'm I'm always making my own stuff and I'm always traveling and out on trails. But your stuff really blew me away. And I think that I was Aww. I was introduced to it because you had tagged me in something on Instagram. And so like I saw that clip and it's funny because it was you making a joke on me, which was super funny. And I love when people do that. <laughs> But the thing, it, it's funny, like, that's not what drew me in. It was some of the shots that you had taken. And I saw that and I was like, ooh, she looks like she knows what she's doing with the camera. And I remember meeting her and her saying that she was going to make YouTube videos. And I just thought, like, you know. Ever... Just that total fan girl. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody makes YouTube videos. Like, well, I won't say everybody, but a lot of people make YouTube videos that are out on the trail. So, you know, I just thought, like, okay, well, she's going to make a vlog. And, like, like a lot of people. But then I saw that clip. And I saw just just the quality of it. And I was like, ooh, I got to tune in and check this out. And then just absolutely fell in love. And I was so jacked to see you make the series of videos after you came out with with the short video. So um, had you planned oh, thank you. from, the, <laughs> did, what was your plan with making, making your videos out there? Did, did you know that you were going to make a whole like film that you put out first? Or was it, did you think that you were just going to do vlogs? Yeah, um, before I answer that, I just want to say that it is pretty crazy and hilarious that I'm even talking to you, like, on this. I think, no, I think it's just funny because, you know, you have that total disconnect between, I guess, like, through hiking and the YouTube world, um, when in reality, everybody is just a hiker. But it is funny because when I first met you, <laughs> I was with my friend Eleven, who was just like, oh, my God, oh, my God, it's done, mm. um, at Timberland Lodge. And then we were just like... I think it's just funny because you watch videos on the internet and you get this, I don't know, yeah, disconnect. Um, yeah. So it was cool meeting you in real life and being like, oh my God, I've seen all those videos to prepare for the PCT and here he is. Um, yeah, okay, that aside. Um, <laughs> well, somebody said, uh, yeah. they, they had a shout out to you, uh, they did a super chat and said, greetings from Washington. And they said, uh, disappointed i didn't see you and the blob out on the pct um what's next for you which we will get to that we will ask her what's next but uh, i, I want okay. to talk to her a little bit about no, her videos that, yeah they should be grateful that they didn't see us because it, that was just if you came across us like 11 people hiking on a trail it was obnoxious at times so i do yeah. apologize for any <laughs> no i just felt obnoxious you know when you know somebody bypasses and you're like thank you and then it's like thank you thank you <laughs> anyway let's let's not get too far into that but um yeah the video so i think sitting out i knew because i feel like the camera is kind of just an extension of me yeah i knew going out that i wanted to make something i knew i wanted to make a kind of summarizing film about my experience yeah. um i had an idea that i might do shorter videos um while i was on trail but day one i'm like nope nope <laughs> i'm not gonna be doing any editing or anything while i'm out there um so yeah i just had the concept of kind of creating a summary of this film just because of this experience just because i'd seen that you know, everybody describes your first through hike as such a life changing um, experience. So, um, and from what I'd read, people were just saying, you know, that the people they were connecting to really impacted them. Yeah. So I had this kind of inkling that, you know, the people were would make up a big part of my experience. Um, but I didn't know how I was going to cut together the film. All I knew is that there were gonna be interesting people out there, so I wanted to interview people and ask them, you know, why are you out here? Yeah. Um, and just kind of capture experiences as I went. The, the way you the way you put, like I, I loved the film, like absolutely amazing. And I think like one of the good things, one of the things that you did, uh, good things, one of the things that you did really, really well in that was capturing the emotion of what it feels like to be off trail and then looking back at the experience, which is something that like mm. really touched me when I saw it because most people and me, myself included, will do a video of the experience while they're on trail and not really like, it's just like, this is fun and exciting and look at all this great stuff that I'm doing. 
But what struck a chord with your videos, with, it's how a lot of hikers feel when they get off, looking back at it like it's this like distant dream that they are trying to relive, and like this memory that's playing in their head. And when I watched your videos, that's what it, it's like. It didn't feel like, and hopefully don't take this in the wrong way, it didn't feel like your experience when it, while you were on the trail, but to me it was like watching your memory of your experience on the trail. And that's what was so amazing about watching it. And like being a, just a fan of film and storytelling and stuff, that's why I fell in love with it and tried to get a ton of other people to fall in love with it. Every time I talk to somebody about videos, like your name always comes up in conversation now. Ah, thanks. Yeah, it, it's, it's interesting. Cause yeah, it was, it's all in hindsight. It's all in reflection. Totally. Um, and I think the first, like the bigger film I made, I think what really helped me was that I'd just gotten home. So everything was very fresh. Um, so, you know, reliving those moments and the emotions that I was feeling on the trail and then directly after coming home, that was very fresh. So I think that helped me kind of portray that in that bigger film. Right. Um, but yeah, the shorter videos are all, um, yeah, just videos of, in hindsight. So it's interesting going back because or looking at them because, you know, your videos that you put online are just kind of, um, you choose what you put in them, right? So with any kind of nonfiction storytelling, you have an agenda, you have the kind of story you want to right. tell. Um, so mine might not be, you know, it's not realistic because you're cutting between all sure. these things happening and most of the day is just walking. It is just simply right. walking. So to be able to cut it together and tell the story um, of how you're feeling, I don't know. It just, I think that's the thing that I try to remind people that, you know, take it with a grain of salt. It's not reality. This is yeah. all my experience. All and smoke this and is mirrors. How, That's <laughs> This is how I feel looking back at it. It's not what it was like day to day. Totally. There's no, you know, folk music taking you along <laughs> and everybody just smiling all day. No, that's what my hikes are usually like. You don't, you don't get that. <laughs> <laughs> you have, yeah. Just, um, just a portable <laughs> floating around. No, I wish. Um, yeah, no. I, I don't know where I was going with that, but... <laughs> yeah, they're just absolutely amazing. Speaking of folk music, I feel like um, this, this song, and you know what song I'm talking about, I, I feel like it's become kind of well-known for people now. Um, the <laughs> song that's at the beginning of of your first video, I, I, it's playing in my head. I'm not much of a singer, so mm -hmm. I won't like terri go, go terrify ahead. people you know, here. I oh, think, no. I think no, that no, no. people want to hear uh, it, Oh, right? they do. <laughs> <laughs> they 100% do. I just don't want to... Don't want to give that to him. Um, who, A, who is, I, I've actually looked that up and I actually have it on my phone now and listen to it every once in a while. How did you, how did you find that music in, in particular? Because one, from a creator standpoint, I want to know, A, was it licensed? B, um, what was your connection to the music? Is there a reason that you chose it to, to kind of be like, mm. I feel like that's kind of the theme song for all of your your entire hike is, is that song. Mm. Um, no, it was just full on copyright, you know, just completely ripped off the artist. Um, no. Uh, yeah. So I think, um, I found like that subscription service music bed that a lot of creators are on music using. Bed? Yeah. So I think that is a really cool, um, yeah. Music subscription service. Yeah. That's what I use. Um, I just didn't know that they were yeah, on there. So, yeah, so I um, had, was new to using Musicbed, and I think I was just, you know, thinking of themes and ideas and just the emotions of how I was feeling to encapsulate, you know, the feeling of finishing my hike. And I was just kind of trawling through that website and um, typing in different keywords, very, you know, cheesy, cliche, like explore, adventure, I've spent, reflect, I've spent you know, those days kinds of looking things. for music, like looking for one song doing that. Yeah, it takes a long time. Um, so I stumbled upon that song and as soon as I clicked play, I thought this, this is it. Like that song actually inspired me. If I look back now, it actually inspired my whole edit because yeah. I had been going through all my video clips. I'd kind of 
sorted things out. And, you know, when you go into an edit like that, it's so overwhelming. You know, I had oh, maybe 400 gigs of footage and it was just a lot to go That's through lot, and yeah. sort. Um, so you sit down and you're like, where do I start? Where do I even start telling the story? Do I say... You know, you can be, you can start from day one and that's the easy way to do it. But if you're trying to tell a particular story about a theme, maybe you want to start in a different way. Um, it's hard too. So it's hard I, to find that emotion yeah. in music. I, I've done that to where I've went, usually how I curate music is I will get an idea and a theme in my head. I'll go to something like music, but I've used Epidemic in the past, mm. switched to music bed this mm. past year and I'll go there and just start finding stuff that in my brain feels right. And then I'll literally go mm. and just play like the first little chunk of edit, like the loose edit, and just play the music to it. And like, see if I can mm. find that emotion that I'm looking for. And that's something that mm. was done so well in your videos is every single piece of music that you selected was so perfect for the scene that it was in and for the video that it was in. Like it, it blended so ah. well. And that's coming from like mm. somebody that A, considers, like I've been an audiophile my entire life and I used to own a recording studio and like the way you selected music is better than I would have ever selected music for a video, which blows me away. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a massive compliment. Yeah, because I have never thought to be someone um, to have good taste in music. I've never been the person that people ask, oh, who should I listen to? You know, I just have never been that person my entire yeah. life. So for people to be like, hey, what's your playlist? I'm like, really? You want to know what I listen to? I get that um, a lot too. But Everybody I always wants to know, what do you listen to on the trail? Like stuff mm -hmm. that you probably mm -hmm. wouldn't like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just Lord of the Rings soundtrack nonstop, just on repeat. Concerning Hobbits the whole way, nothing else. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think that it's similar to you where you play the tracks you think of the kind of emotion that you're trying to portray and then just playing the song and I think going back to um that song explore it um yeah I just clicked play and that's the right one I knew straight away I just felt like wow this this is <laughs> it's bringing up everything so um yeah it's a it's also a helpful way to um go into an edit where you have a piece of music to cut to um yeah, that evokes that emotion you're trying to portray. Yeah, now I know that you had a little bit of background with filmmaking and, and, and building mm -hmm. story, but it's kind of what we were talking about, what I was talking about with Heather earlier, is the fact that, you know, at least that's how I, I started and I got my start and how I know a lot of people that got their start, but I feel like there's something about doing a long distance hike, getting off, going through post-trail depression, and that bringing out this new creativity in you. Do you think that mm. doing the hike, like, it, here you go, here's a question. If you were doing your videos while you were out on the trail, if you were like vlogging or even doing like a video a week, do you think that they would have the same emotion and, and be as creative as what you made them after getting back off? Do you think that the like having a little bit of maybe post-trail depression, maybe you didn't go through that, but I bet you did most of us do no i don't <laughs> i think we all do but do you think that that influenced how you were able to bring that emotion out in the videos mm -hmm. um yeah yeah i think yeah 100 percent. I, I think you're also just very limited while you're out on trail to be able to edit um it's a nightmare. yeah so i think just logistics wise you know creatively I was able to do a lot more in the edit because I can sit down at a desktop and have, you know, dual monitors and my laptop and, you know, be in my editing cave. Um, so there's that side of it. But in terms of the like evoking of emotions, I think, yeah, like I said, hindsight and reflection on the experience definitely helped me understand it more because you're more separated from the experience. You can look back and think, you know, wow, how did that, um, you know, how did that change me? And even going back through my journals, cause I kept a daily journal. And so that would help me in the edit. I would reference that to say, wow, like, how was I feeling that day? Um, so that present, those present thoughts paired with, you know, hindsight reflection helps me put together more, I guess, more of a whole story and understanding. 
um, the experience and how it changed me to who I am now. Um, yeah, and I think creatively you just have much more of an open mind while you're on the trail because Absolutely. everything – you have to be so present. You have no other choice, right? right? You no have to, distractions. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So your mind is quite clear. It can be quite empty. You can just be thinking about food, you know. Like, Most of the time. It's not – you're not very <laughs> philosophical – I didn't have any philosophical thoughts out there. Um, but when you come back, you're like, oh, I'm so what? No, no. But, you know, you you look back and, yeah, that's when you can understand more of the experience that you had. Um, yeah. <laughs> so going forward, do, do you have any plans on, I guess, aside from hiking? Because I would assume that you got other hikes planned. I know you and I have chatted a little bit about some hikes. Um but going forward as a storyteller and as a media creator, are, are you going to pursue more of that in, in some other avenues? Yeah, yeah. I think um, it's funny because I was asked, you know, uh, by Craig, uh, Craig Adams, yeah. who is also a YouTube creator. He asked me um, on his podcast, he said, you know, if you were to choose between hiking or filmmaking, which one would you choose? Mm. And... I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't, I actually, or th he said through hiking and filmmaking. And I struggled with that question. I was like, I don't think I could. Um, but in hindsight, I think looking back at that question, I think I probably would choose filmmaking. I think first and foremost, I'm a person who has always had a camera in their hand. Um, but I'm also cheating because I said through hiking. So it still means I can hike. Um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, but in terms of, yeah, I guess filmmaking and creating um, content or films or whatever you want to call it is a massive passion of mine. And it's something I want to pursue full time and move more into the space and be able to tell more stories and not just my own, like you've experienced um, with your documentary. Totally. You know, being, being at a place where you can help other people tell their stories. Um, or bring light to um, issues or topics that people may not have thought about before. Um, so that to me is the dream to pursue kind of nonfiction storytelling. Um, I think it's amazing. And for now, I think how we're all like, I, I think everybody is like a natural born storyteller, right? Like we all have a very individual story that only we can tell that only comes out from us. And that's why I always try to encourage people, if you're gonna go out and do something like a long distance hike, if you're gonna go do a bike tour, if you're gonna go live in a van for months on end, like create something, tell a story in some way, whether it's a podcast or a blog or videos or through photo, mm -hmm. because only you can tell that story and like there's always an audience for it and you can always inspire mm -hmm. somebody to then do the same and then we're just, just kind of passing it forward and, and telling stories. And I think it's pretty amazing how we can mm -hmm. inspire each other to do that. Yeah, 100%. And I think it's just a lot of people get caught in the, that how do I do it? Oh, it's too overwhelming. There is so much to say. And I think it's always about just taking those little steps towards that kind of thing you're trying to do because it is, yeah, super overwhelming oh, yeah. to try encapsulate that whole experience, you know, I experienced so much, I changed so much. How do I tell that or how do I show that? But, um, yeah, it's those little steps. But, yeah, everybody has their story. And um, I think it's cool that, you know, with your platform, you are moving towards, you know, trying to tell more stories or create more awareness around um, public lands yeah. and I think um, or the preservation of them. And I think that's really cool, you know. You have got to that point where you're like, okay, cool, now how else can I? give back through this platform that I've built. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Appreciate it. <laughs> Glad somebody's paying attention <laughs> to that. <laughs> um, so I, I didn't watch my documentary. <laughs> I had a, I had a gear geek question for you and I was going to try to find it real quick. So, um, <laughs> sure. I know you used two different cameras to film. So for everybody that's watching, because I'm a big camera geek because I love film. Um, that's totally what I wanted to talk about. So, you know, we, we, we always want to talk with different people about different things, especially what they're passionate about. And, um, I, and I think that's fair to say, right? Like you're, you're definitely passionate about filmmaking. So that's really what I wanted to talk to you about over anything else. Um, mm -hmm. So 
as a camera gear geek, I know that you used, what, two cameras? Um, you used a, a Sony, what model was it? Uh, it was a A7S Mark II. Mark II. Uh, what lens? Mm. I used the 35 millimeter. It was the F2.8 so you, Zeiss. You just used Sony the Prime, just one Prime? Just one Prime. I Yeah, yeah very limited, um, but tried to push myself a little bit creatively I'm, just by having I'm a, one. shoot like the majority of everything with a 24 Prime. And then my, my mm. buddy Panda, who made some pretty good PCT videos as well, he does everything. Oh, yeah. I've seen his. Oh, my God. They're He's incredible. He's got the same 35 that you're talking about. He does all of oh, He did no. the entire PCT <laughs> with the 35. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's, I, I've always been a prime person. I think it like it, it kind of forces you to be a little bit more creative with one lens whenever you have to figure mm -hmm. out different angles and, and different uh, perspectives with just that one focal length. So I'm, I'm glad to hear mm -hmm. that you're a prime person as well. Mm -hmm. But the, the piece of gear that I wanted to talk about, because I was so shocked when I watched your stuff, is this thing. Um, yes! The, <laughs> the DJI Osmo Pocket. I picked this up last year, right before the, the AZT, and I was dead set on this was like the best tool in the world. And I honestly ended up not being 100% happy with the footage I got out of this. I took it to Scotland and shot a bunch of stuff in Scotland. How in the hell did you get your footage to look that good out of this thing? Like, it's something that has uh. perplexed me because I, I, I think it's a great tool. I think it's super cool, compact. And I think it'd be great for like somebody that just wants to vlog, like just always looking at the camera. Mm. But some of the shots that you got in your videos with this don't look like they were shot with this. It looks like it was shot with something else. And it kind of shocked me when I found out how much of your stuff that you shot with this over the mm -hmm. a7 and then when i watch it i can totally tell now like oh that's clearly not the a7 because it, it wouldn't look mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. what it was it is it just color grading or like <laughs> yeah i mean i yeah, thank you but yeah let's put you on the spot it's but it's just like, that was one thing that I, I had to pick your brain about because yeah Mm -hmm. No, there is always a clear difference between, it, especially to someone who yeah knows cameras. You just look at it and you can tell straight away. Okay, oh, yeah. that's that. You can tell when something's big, digital, you know, when something's camera. got a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think. Um, uh, yeah. I I don't know. I guess it's the maybe the color grade. I think. Um, I mainly use that camera, especially just for walking shots because, you know, in the kind of like selfie side mode, you know, those clips, it's always funny because I think about those clips and it's just like me walking. But if you thought about somebody, seeing somebody on trail just with their like camera like that. Oh yeah, I do it oh, all it the time. Funny. I get weird looks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I always try to be pretty subtle about it, but you get caught out. Um, yeah, so... I think, I mean, I think that's it. And yeah, majority it would have been for walking shots. So I think movement may have helped. Um, and, but I agree in terms of, yeah, there's a clear quality difference no matter what. But it also is, I think, such an ideal camera, especially for somebody who doesn't want to lug a big camera and isn't super into camera yeah, gear. It's, it's um, a great to just tool. be out of vlog. Although the audio isn't that great, no. um, but I've heard, I've heard there's in uh, in the new edition there may be um, an attachment for yeah, it. Yeah, they just came out with a little oh. adapter to where you can you can put a mm -hmm. mic into it. But I don't. It's just like a little thing yeah. that dangles off the bottom, so I don't know exactly where you attach said mic. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I think there's something to be said about cameras that are just very easy to access and whip out and film to capture totally. moments because oftentimes you don't you know no matter what you do you're going to have to reset the lighting or change settings on your bigger camera so that can take time and sometimes you're just so tired with the little camera it was just easy to kind of it was in my fanny pack all the time yeah. so if i felt like oh this moment could be cool to capture i just whip it out and um film so it was cool and that's because you could just capture those moments that otherwise may not have ever been captured. Yeah, I picked up a GoPro this year to start using. Like, I haven't used a GoPro in years, but they finally got to a point to where, like, they look pretty decent now, and you cannot have the stupid fish eye look on it anymore. So I picked one of those, but solely because I thought that this was going to be, like, the winner and took it out, and I just I couldn't get even color grading it. I could not get the image I wanted out of it. I was just, for everyone that's watching, like, that has been asking about this camera, because I know I... 
kind of suggested it last year. And I, and I think that I suggested it as if you want, if you're just going to do daily vlogging and you want something that's really easy and stable, this would be great. But if you're doing something where you want a more cinematic look, I wouldn't suggest it. Go watch her videos because she totally proved me wrong on that. <laughs> you can definitely make this look very cinematic and very great. Um, yeah, just blew me away. That's been something that's been on my mind for a while of, of wanting to ask you about how in the hell you got that image out of that camera. Because I even like, I bought the, the little, like the, the ND, like the magnetic ND filters yeah. and stuff. But yeah. still couldn't get it. I didn't actually have any of those because I bought the camera just, I think, just as it was released because I was just so stoked. I was the same as you when it came out. I was like, that is the perfect yeah. hiking camera because, you know, it's got its little stabilized. And I agree, like the picture has, you know, some, not a lot, but it's got some to be desired, something to be desired. Anyway, um, yeah, so there are ways to, um, I guess, go about it. I think it's color grading or maybe you're just um, blinded by just, you know, the uh all the fast editing all the quick cuts and uh incredible music choices you know <laughs> it's, it's funny we're all a critic of our own stuff I, every time i put something on, i'm like this is terrible like too many quick cuts like you didn't see that mistake there but it's funny what like you uh -huh. see and what other people see but, yeah, mm -hmm. it's phenomenal mm -hmm. work on that stuff absolutely um no, so going forward, um, what do you have in the books? If everything, I know you said that what just today or yesterday, you guys kind of, kind of can come out of hiding oh, a little yeah. bit, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, like I said, KFC is now open. Takeaways are, you know, free game. Uh, yeah, New Zealand has been, I guess, like in level four lockdown. We're now in level three, but. It essentially means that, you know, you can get a flat white. You can go get coffee. Um, I don't know if you know what a flat white is. Um, yeah. I, wait, no, I do know what a flat white is because... Yeah. Because I, of Scotland. Just because of Scotland, States, yeah. Oh, okay, Scotland. I've seen them in the States and I bought them and they're not. They're not. No? <laughs> but they're very close. Um, anyway, that's just me. Okay. Uh, being a bit of a coffee snob. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so we can now drive to local trails nice. within i think 15 minutes so we can now drive a little bit further and people can some people can go back to work but we're still essentially in lockdown i can't just fly to the south island sure. and go for a really sweet hike um but in terms of plans yeah i think we were talking that you you're planning to the gdt i don't I'm know still, if, i mean you know my flight yeah. is not till the end of June, last week of June, and I would be starting in July. So like, obviously it's gonna, it's all gonna matter what happens this month and kind of going into next month and if, if something's developed, mm -hmm. but obviously right now it's not looking great. Like, it's not that it's not looking great, but it's not looking like to be that sure. I do. Exactly, so mm -hmm. we'll see. And I still have some other stuff on the back burner that I cannot travel so far for, but going forward, mm -hmm. if everything clears up in a perfect world that we're all ready to go back, what, uh, what's, what are you going to try to hit first? What, what's on your list? Um, yeah, well, in a perfect world, GDT was on my list. I had organized a, um, a Canadian visa to allow me to work for two years there as well. So I was just planning to head to Canada. My list was get a temp job, hike another trail, move to Canada. <laughs> it's literally on my wall. It's kind of funny um, or kind of embarrassing. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I got the temp job um, and I was going to work it till, I guess, June and then uh, or mid-June and then the flyover. But I think looking at flights, I don't think international travel is going to open, especially from New Zealand, till maybe early July. Right. I've kind of ruled it out because I don't want to get my heart broken by, right. <laughs> by like, like everybody who's tried to hike a trail this sure. year. I, can't, I just feel for them so much. Um, so that was, I guess, plan A. Um, plan B now is just, I guess, as domestic travel opens up more in New Zealand, I think I'm just, I want to hit some more hikes in New Zealand while I'm here. I may as well. It's, a good place to hike. People right travel here. all over the world to come here, and uh, we take it for granted. For Everybody sure. does. Everybody um, takes what they have in their backyard for granted, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess I just have to maybe head down to the South Island and hike, live in a car for a 
couple weeks. Who knows? Um, so it is all a bit up in the air. Yeah, I but I like some nature. That would be great. Nice. So uh, quick fire questions. Um, not really quick fire. It's just the general questions that everybody's getting asked. <laughs> yeah. So um, cold soaker stove. Cold soaker stove. Uh, I started, uh, it's funny, PCT, I literally did half and half. So at the halfway point, I decided to came cold soaking from now on. Um, I loved having a stove in the Sierra that was incredible to have a hot coffee on our long breaks. Yeah. Um, but ever since I started cold soaking, I was like, oh, I don't know if I can go back. I think I'm, it's just too easy. Do, and, do it long enough um, and you'll get burnt out on it and then you'll go back. Like that's what I did mm -hmm. this year. I'm like, all right, well, I've been cold soaking yeah. for like three, almost four years. Like it's time to like maybe try hot food again. And I got to say, it's been pretty yeah. enjoyable. <laughs> yeah. And add that tiny bit of weight for a just completely better meal experience right. um so so i've been converted to cold soaking but yeah i might change my mind so Who what's knows? your what's your go-to meal for cold soaking what's your number one I, I know that your number one thing to eat on trail is peanut butter like i think everybody yeah has followed your stuff. like we all get that like <laughs> just a jar just that's that's all it I, eat. I cold soak straight from the peanut butter <laughs> jar um meals i think cold soaking i think i didn't have enough practice on it to get that you know have the greatest um meals but i think i really enjoyed um couscous with you know those like dehydrated lentil soups yeah that because they've already got flavor in them um and then you need some kind of sauce or like crunch or yeah. yeah dehydrated veggie or um yeah, I found that TVP was really good, but you need a lot of flavor. The textured vegetable protein. Yeah, I can't do it. It tears my stomach up. I've tried for years to oh, eat really? it on trail, and it just, like, rips me yeah. apart. It sucks. Ah, uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a solid, I guess, protein choice. Um, yeah, nothing that exciting for cold soaking. I think my hot cooking meals are a lot better. So what, a what's lot your, more what's your, if you're carrying a stove, what's your go-to hot meal? Oh, well, I'm similar. I didn't really eat a lot of ramen. It took me a while um, before I ever caved, and I ate it once. Literally, the first time I ate ramen on trail was, I don't know if you've seen the photo or video of me when I've aged like the 50 puffiness, years yeah. overnight. That was the night after I had my first ramen on trail, my first ever ramen. And I, I don't know if it was like the down, the altitude, the sodium – or whatever, but it was that was the night after my first Yikes. ramen, and I was like, never again. <laughs> um, I yeah, I didn't eat ramen. Hey, have you have you have you thought about um, maybe trying it like while you're not anywhere, just to like test it, like eat a little bit of ramen to see if like do an experiment. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just yeah, do a bit of an allergy test. Um, no, I haven't uh, forced myself to do that yet. No, I think I really liked soba noodles. I actually talked about this in my q and I really liked soba noodles and um, miso soup packets and mm. sesame oil was game changer because oh, yeah. the aroma, it just, sesame oh, so oil good. makes but everything also, taste better. Oh yeah. And Japanese curry. I would pack up the Japanese curry cubes and I think those made everyone jealous because they're just little cubes and you cook, I cooked them with Israeli couscous and dehydrated veggies and it was just like this super wholesome, comforting, tastes like home meal. Take notes, folks. So you should try that's, that. That's how you cook a meal on the trail. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> my nor rice mm -hmm. sides and instant mashed potatoes just sound terrible compared to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think I ever did it. Nor's rice side, which I think I was just—I don't know why I didn't. Oh, maybe I did a couple go, times. Go but. do the AT. You'll you'll suck down some nor. Mm. Guarantee it. Uh, I'm, sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure. It's a staple. Um, so, what is your uh, what's your shoe of choice? What what are you what are you currently hiking in? Um, I ended up in Ultra Timps, uh, but I found I I liked them. But I also found they probably didn't give me as much support as I wanted. Mm. I think my favorite, and when I hit the trail again, is going to be um, the Lone Peaks. I love, love them. Um, I actually only ever had the mid version, mid height version yeah. of them, like the more boot style, which is kind of like a no go on through. You need it. You need it. But yeah, they were um, they were good. So I think yeah, I think Lone Peak. Nice. And do you have a pretty mm. narrow foot or a wide foot? I always ask that when people no, talk very about. 
I, I buy I buy men's shoes every single time because I have the widest feet. Um, oh. Yeah, my sister used to call them flippers, so I think um, pretty <laughs> accurate. They'll get, they'll get wider. That's what happens. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, mm-hmm. and then what is your current pack of choice? What are you What are you hiking in right now, or hiking with? I guess I should say. Yeah, I've got um, I've got the Waymark Forty. I oh, think the is it the through? Yeah, yeah, the through. Um, yeah, I definitely. I mean, I may or may not have been influenced by this this guy called um, Darwin. Oh. Uh, I don't know if you don't know if you've heard of him. Um, mm. Yeah. No, so I think before hitting the trail, I was looking at options. And I I wanted to try frameless for my first through. I wanted to go as light as possible. Yeah. Um, I didn't know too much about you know the ultralight world or just you know frameless packs in general because there's no such thing as that in New Zealand there is no ultralight gear here there is nothing um maybe I'm being a bit dramatic but I don't think there's anything (laughs) um there is no so yeah I went that was the kind of first pack I'd seen there's also Palante um which I'd heard of but I was like um yeah, I wasn't too sure on the sizing, so I saw the 40-liter Waymark pack, and I liked that I could choose my colors pretty yeah. much, which is pretty <laughs> sad, but <laughs> that was yeah. exciting to me. So, And and I liked it. I, I, yeah, I liked it. Nice. Well, right on. Well, thanks for jumping on here and, and chatting about videos and creating and yeah. geeking out about camera gear and and yeah, everything. So hopefully, no, I, thanks for having I can't me. wait to see you get on the next trail and, and, and create some more content. And I can't wait to see what you create off the trail because I think now's a really time for everyone just to like create, right? Like, and everyone to yeah. just tell stories and get that out of themselves. And mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, just pandemic aside, try, try, have like a couple minutes of your day to <laughs> get something done. Right. Um, yeah, no, thanks for having me. And uh, I hope that you have another three hour <laughs> Q&A. <laughs> how, how, how much longer can I stay interested? No. Thank no. <laughs> anyway, Don't jinx it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, take care. Thanks so much for jumping on Sweet and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Yeah. See you. Bye. All right, folks. So. Big thanks to TipTap for jumping on and chatting with us all the way from New Zealand. So I think that is the first international guest that we've had here on Hiker Trash Live. Uh, So it sounds like I'm kind of getting a little jittery. The stream health might be having a hard time right now. Sorry about that, guys. Um, So let's, uh, let's go ahead and answer a handful of questions over here and hopefully the, uh, the computer will stop lagging so much and kind of catch back up with me. So I'll answer a handful of questions. And then after I answer a handful of questions, we'll just go ahead and bring in our third guest. I'm going to try to not go too long today, um, like I did last week. So that's the plan anyways. We'll see how that works out. All right. So um, let me see real quick. If you guys want to Hold on for a second. I might be able to help the, see if I can fix that jitter. I broke the internet. (laughs) All right, so let me see if I can, everybody just hold tight. I'm gonna disappear for a second and then I'll be right back on. Well, no, I'm not gonna do that because that'll mess up the the entire live stream. So hopefully everything will just catch back up and it'll be okay. All right, so if you have some questions over here, I will answer them real quick. Um, I'm not losing trail and heavy snowpack. So somebody asked tips, tricks, suggestions on not losing trail in a heavy snowpack. So um, I, you know, whenever I was on the PCT in 2018, basically we dealt with the same thing. There was quite a bit of snowpack and really the only way that I was able to navigate through that was using something like gut hook on my phone. So using gut hook and basically just being able to see that line, then looking out and kind of going towards the line and trying to follow it as much as possible. Um, on a lot of trails, there are cairns. So there are rock cairns that people have built. So it's always, 
a good idea to kind of spot those out and follow those. But really having some sort of GPS, whether it's a GPS unit and you can follow a GPX track, or it's something like Gut Hook on your phone or Gaia to where you can at least see the line of the trail and you can you can see where you're starting to go veer off and then just kind of start making your way back to that line. I did that a lot on the PCT in 2018, unfortunately. And I feel like there's a lot of people that have to do that, going up passes and stuff like that. Uh, for everyone that's asking who my third guest is, it is Frozen from Outdoor Adventures, and we will get him on here in just a second. Um, no go long. Um, somebody said no, go long. <laughs> we got nothing better to do. Yeah, but last week I streamed for three hours and then I couldn't talk for like a day afterwards. It just totally stripped my vocal cords out. So I'm going to try to not do that this time. All right. Um, there is a question. Somebody said, your go-to hot slash cold coffee, Starbucks Via, Alpine Start, or something else while on the trail. So um, I like Starbucks Via. It's a good alternative that you can kind of find everywhere. You, you're kind of able to find Starbucks Via in just about every grocery store now. When I did the AT in 2015, it was like a rarity that you found it. Now you can find it everywhere. But the coffee that I've been drinking a lot of lately is a company called CS Coffee. Um, it's a smaller kind of cottage company that makes coffee, but all of their packaging is 100% compostable. As a hiker, especially a long distance hiker that spends a lot of time on trail that can create a lot of trash, one of the things that I've really tried to do in the past year is have a little bit less of an impact on the environment, helping to protect public lands, um, you know, definitely, trying to follow leave no trace better but by doing things like by selecting products and stuff that are 100 percent compostable it makes sure that the things that i am throwing away at least i know aren't going to be sitting in a landfill forever so it's those little things that i try to do so lately i've been using a coffee called cs coffee which is an instant coffee and their packaging is 100 percent compostable that's kind of been my go-to. So I would suggest checking their stuff out. But um, yeah, all those coffees that you suggested, Alpine Start, Starbucks Via, um, is all good stuff. I'll drink just about anything as long as it has caffeine in it. So it looks like I am jittery a lot. I really apologize for that, guys. Um, it would be because there's so many people on here. Um, somebody said... Ooh, would love to see Darwin and Syntax77 chat. I've been thinking about reaching out to, to Syntax and seeing if he wants to come on one of these live casts. I would love to chat with him. Like I said, he's one of my inspirations. He's one of the people that got me into wanting to do this. So, um, yeah, maybe I'll get him on here. Somebody yelled, get off caffeine. No, I like caffeine. I will continue to drink caffeine. Thank you, though. Um... Let's see. Um, somebody said burn toilet paper. That stuff is gold. It seems like it. Seems like it right now for sure. All right, folks. So I'm kind of at this point, I'm seeing a lot of just kind of the same questions um, coming in. So I think that I am going to see if my third guest can go ahead and jump in. Let me see. Let me go back here. Let me see if he is ready to come in. Hopefully the stream is getting a little bit better. Um, so my last guest is somebody that I've done a few collaborations with, a couple videos here and there on YouTube, and um, he's become a pretty good friend, one of those good internet friends. So oh, somebody said reset your Chrome. Oh, I'm supposed to reset something. So I'll reset, you guys hold tight. So, I am resetting. Hopefully I'm good for all you guys. Maybe mine's just really kind of jittery. There it goes, that helps a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and bring in our third guest. Um, a man that I have collaborated on a couple videos and I now consider a really good friend, an e-friend if you will. Uh, hopefully we can do some hiking soon together. But 
Let me get him connected here. All right, so let me get him in here real quick, real quick. Am I still jittery on your end, brother? Um, let's see, I cannot hear you at all. On Skype I am? Good. I don't know how I am on, 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 the, uh, on the live feed, but let me get you up here real quick. Um, all right, ladies and gentlemen, my next guest, it sounds so like a talk show, doesn't it? My next guest is Frozen. Welcome, good sir. Thank you for having me, Darwin. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, man. Thanks Always for... good talking to you. Absolutely. Thanks for jumping on here and chatting with us in these these strange, uncertain times where we're all trapped yeah. inside and need something to do. <laughs> the I, the IT guy in me was trying to fix all your problems while you were lagging a little bit, but I can't do anything. Yeah, I mean, it, it says my, my stream health is good. Like, yeah. my internet is, is fast. I don't know why it's lagging. My, Maybe my... that call from New Zealand screwed you up. That's what it is. It was totally Tip Tap's fault. Thanks, Tip Tap. Yeah, I really appreciate it. <laughs> so, uh, so how you doing, man? How's everything been I'm going? Doing, I'm doing good. I'm uh, struggling with some knee issues. I think those are kind of ironed out, but uh, I'm ready to get outside and do some miles again. Yeah. You know, just locked down in here. Haven't left the house really in like five weeks. But at least like you're locked good. down in a pretty professional looking space. You got the like the, the it cool looks blue it's neon lights going on. Of a sardine can. Yeah, <laughs> I got about. I, I'm I'm really in a sardine can too. Just like I didn't do the cool backdrop with the neon lights and stuff. I just got this like really boring black background. <laughs> I like it. I like your boring background. Oh, thanks. Background. I, I appreciate it. I, I thought about hanging some stuff on it to like jazz it up a little bit, I, maybe. <laughs> so, uh, so let's uh, let, let's chat, man. Let's let's chat about you and and some of the stuff that that you've been doing uh, for a while now. So, how long have you had the, the channel Outdoor Adventures? I think we're going on. Maybe six years. Really? I think it's six years. Yeah, it's been it's been a while. And I like you. Uh, I was really influenced by Syntax seventy seven. So if you can go ahead and bring him on there, I'd love that as well. Yeah, man. It, him it, and Shug and yeah, all those guys. It's funny. I don't think that I've ever really sat and had a conversation with him. Um, He's a cool dude. Yeah, it's it, it's I, I've become really good friends with like all the people that have inspired me to start creating, and like he's just one of the dudes that I don't know why I just like I've never reached out to him. Just been like, hey man, like let's chat for a little bit. But I remember watching whenever I was really getting back into backpacking, I was uh, doing a lot of hiking and backpacking in the Red River Gorge, and I remember like typing into Google like Red River Gorge because I was looking for maps, and he had this video that popped up that was. That was him basically just going out like on a weekend. He parked his car and he went. I don't know if you've ever seen that video. Yeah, it was his first video with that that Hennessy uh, expedition hammock. I think it was. I watched him a lot. Yeah, and I I went out there <laughs> and like that was kind of one of the first times I had seen somebody doing like, I guess a trail vlog really like a trail. I'm hiking. Here's my setup. I'm talking to the camera. His video was probably the first time I ever saw that. And then. You know, with long distance hiking and stuff, watching Loner um, do all his AT stuff from I think 2012, and then Redbeard, and I didn't know that you had been doing it that long. I think you've been in the game longer than I have. I think you've had a channel longer than I have been. That doesn't seem right. I've, I've only know. been doing this for five right. years. Uh, Technically four and a half years, man. I could be totally wrong. I could be absolutely <laughs> wrong. I don't know. It feels like it feels like five years at least. How about that? Right. <laughs> nice. But it's always a blast. It's always fun. Like looking back at some of the earlier trips I've been on, what was I thinking? Kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, well, oh, I yeah. can't believe I got that trail with you know, 70 pounds in my back or whatever. Yeah. Nice. I, I wish that I had that. Like back whenever I was really like just starting off, especially long distance hiking, you know, a lot of my stuff, I, I, I never filmed because I never thought, I, I don't even have pictures of a lot of that stuff. I was just like, oh, I'm just going to go out and hike and backpack and, I have nothing yeah. to kind of look back on and, and, and reference uh. aside from like a couple crappy, crappy photos here and there. Um, actually, I have a photo without the beard out on a backpacking trip in Red River Gorge. Um, mm. which is a really That might be one of the only like photos of whenever I was just starting to get into it. But, but yeah, so how did you get your start into uh, backpacking? What, what kind of inspired you to get out there and start backpacking? 
Uh, my uh, my buddy, who was a uh, an Eagle Scout back in when he was a kid, he uh, he texted me one New Year's Eve. He's like, "Hey, man, I want to get back into backpacking, but I need a buddy to go with, so the wife feels okay with it." Yeah. yeah. He's like, "You want to go?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah, we can go. When you want to go? Like May, June, July?" He's like, "No, nah, let's go this this or January, January tenth, I think it was. It was like zero degrees, and we went." Yeah. And uh, I thought I was like, "What am I doing? Like, why am I out here?" And then I ended up loving it. We went up to do uh, another PA trail called Oil Creek, which is it was a great 36 mile trail. Lots of history there, and ever since then I was hooked. And I started to go without him, and I realized I love solo backpacking. It's, right. it's awesome for me. So that's where that all came from. Yeah, and then what? Um, so it was last year that you was it last year that you threw out the AT or the year before? Last year. Last year, yeah. It didn't yeah. seem like a year ago, but yeah, dude. My yeah, last year, I my dates and times and timeline like never <laughs> it, none of it ever makes sense to me like i still feel like i just got off the 18 15 like it's very very weird for me but that's um, fat time is flying yeah when uh so what what got you into the concept of doing a through hike like what what was kind of first inspired one with the at like why the at first the at first was honestly it was just the closest long trail to my house that was i live in Pens pittsburgh pennsylvania so that you know it goes not real close to pittsburgh but in the same states obviously and i had done a lot of east coast backpacking at that point so i was familiar with the terrain well until i hit vermont and new hampshire and all that yeah. stuff <laughs> but yeah that's that's really it the um i had this whole depression thing that i was it was really bad i realized how bad it was while i was out on the at and uh, it just, it was, it was really, really good for me. That just, it, I just needed four months, five months to do, to be selfish, I guess, four, five months to be selfish and to find my own self during my journey. Yeah. Nice. And uh, I guess coming off of the trail, like, how do you think it changed you as far as a, a hiker? How do you think it changed you as far as a, as a content creator? I mean, you had the channel before you went out there. Do you think it changed your perception of like, how you create your videos, how you create content and stuff? I don't think it would change how I create content. Uh, it definitely uh, filtered back into my everyday life. I'm more like, I'll figure it out. I always had to have everything planned, and now I live by, I'll figure it out tomorrow. Right. right. It, it relaxes you. Totally. You know? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It definitely, it teaches you a completely different lifestyle out there. I, I have really good lifetime friends out of this now. It's, it's been amazing. Right. I think that it just totally froze up on us. Oh, did it? Hold on, folks. It's a shame. If you can see me or hear me, chill out for a second. Um, it's just weird because your Skype stream is fine. Yeah, it's it, this should be fine. I don't know why. It, this is this is the problem with using OBS sometimes. It's just like all yeah. of a sudden just doesn't want to work. I don't know if I stop streaming and start again, if that will mess with anything. Um, Depends on how you set up the key, mm, private key. I mean, I think it's always the same. I just don't know if it'll go away and then come back or it'll create an entirely different video. It might create a new stream. <laughs> um, well, if you ske you scheduled it, so it might be, it might be a different key. Oh yeah. It's, it doing, all, it's doing all kinds of crazy stuff now. Dang. Uh, That's a shame. Uh, we lost it. <laughs> everybody hold tight. Everybody hold tight. I can fix it. <laughs> Technical <laughs> difficulties, man. It was. It was Tip Tap's fault. She totally probably damn New Zealand. Um, uh, dang. It's still rolling on my phone. Yeah, you can still see everything. So far, but we're on a lag. We're on a delay. So we'll see in a minute or so. However long your delay is. Um. All right. I think. Can everybody, are we back? Is it all good? I think we're good. Everybody's saying that. We're good? We're back. It still says video output low, but it, I don't see a lag. Mm. So. That's so, delayed too, so it might be all right. Somebody now. says it's, it's all Frozen's fault. Yeah. That's it's all That's good on my end. I did all the right things. It's, it's, it's tip tap. It's, it's, it's frozen. Like, this is what happens when you have other people on your channel. They just. They mm. kill it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So we are back. Excellent. 
my tramley's texting me saying it's all good Excellent. so yeah we're good that's weird <laughs> Uh, so, um, where were we at? So, yeah, so talking about um, just going out and doing the AT, yeah, I feel like it definitely, um, someone said Frozen is freezing the feed. Frozen free, <laughs> yeah. I get that a lot, too. <laughs> um, so, you know, coming back, I, it does, like, totally change your perception of time, right? And it makes you, I feel like for me, it makes me not feel like I need to hustle and bustle and try to get so much stuff done all the time. Yes, yeah. exactly. That's exactly it. It allows you to wake up every nor every morning and look at that sunrise and look at the stars at night and realize that life is just not busy, busy, busy. Relax and enjoy it kind of thing. Right. And that's, I think that's what I really needed. Slow down. So do you have any plans going forward of, of doing any other through hikes? Um, yeah. Uh, I'm thinking... Um, five four or five years doing the pct nice. and seeing where life is at that point i definitely would like to do all three of the well-known long trails sure. i would love to see it just it, it's not even about being a triple crowner i know you're real big on you don't care about being a triple crowner i don't yeah, either it's for, i want to see i want to i want to have that lifestyle yeah for me it's, it's always it's not really that i'm not like i think that people that that do a cripple time triple crown especially like like heather right like i mean what she's done is amazing and like big time oh, hats off to her and like i would never be like oh yeah. you're a triple crown like that's not my my no, thing not like that at all for me it's it's more like there's just there are so many long distance trails there's so many different diverse environments to hike in like and i think that i got that from the pct like i loved the pct but the problem, my mistake I made is I went to go do the Pinhoti Trail before doing the PCT. So I did a small trail. It's like 335 miles long. So then like halfway through the PCT, I was like, man, I'm still on this trail. I could have like done the Pinhoti and the Arizona Trail and the Colorado Trail. And that's, it kind of rewired my brain to think, this is amazing to experience this one trail. But instead of taking four months to hike one trail, like imagine how many trails I could hike in different diverse environments and stuff in those four months. And that's really when I started kind of going towards. So it's not that I don't want to do the CDT because I do want to do it. Um, I will do oh, it. Yeah. It's just like right now there's so much amazing stuff to hit before I get out there. Right. Exactly. Are there any smaller trails that you kind of have um, kind of have your mind set on right now that, that you would want to go tackle? Uh, yeah, I'd love to tackle the, the Foothills Trail. I've heard it's been recommended yeah. to me a lot on my channel. I'm sure you Same. got it, right? Yeah, yeah, everybody loves that trail. Yeah, so I, I think I'm a, I gotta do it. I have to. Right. So, yeah. Um, there's another one. Uh, I don't know if it's a long trail. I have a. I have all the. I have this big. I'm like you. I have a big folder full of trails. Oh, yeah. The, the Kanawha Trace, in West Virginia. Yeah. Do you have you yeah, I've, I've, seen that yeah, before? Yeah, totally. Been on that? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's that's another one, and I like to do the Colorado Trail at some point soon here too. Yeah. In sections. I think that's the way to handle that for me. North or south? Probably south. Yeah. That's I I know people that have done it two different ways and everybody always says south. Like go south on that trail. Go south? Okay. That's, well, that's what good. I always hear. Um and that's what I plan right. on still doing this year. Like hopefully yeah. still doing this year. I think it'll happen for I you. I really hope so. I'm looking man. forward to it. Um so one thing I, I wanted to talk to you about, because I know both in, both you and I kind of have this, um, probably the same mindset. I think we've talked about it in the past with, you know, with you getting into hammocks and, and tarps and packs and kind of the same as me is I think that we're both pretty big fans of cottage gear companies, um, oh, for sure. supporting cottage gear companies. And, and just for me, it's always been about like, I want to use a backpack or I want to use a tent that like, I know the dude who built it. Like, I know that I can call up and be like, hey, man, great tent. And it's just like there's some yeah. – I think that's like a – it's it's some sort of hiker trash pride because it, it, it feels like <laughs> like they're part of your tramway, right? Like, whenever right, yeah, like, exactly. That's cool exactly. pack. Like, who made your pack? Like, yeah. oh, my buddy blah, blah, blah made my pack. And they're not really yeah. your buddy, but uh -huh. it feels like it, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, right now, uh, I know we had kind of talked – a little bit prehand about kind of everything going on, but I know that you have kind of done some development a little bit for some cottage companies, which is what I've, I've done that in the past 
where I've helped people prototype stuff. Um, so I know that you, didn't you recently do some sort of a tarp or something um, with, is it, is it Light AF that you did it with? Light AF, yeah. Chris from Light AF, nice. yeah. We, uh, after, after, the, uh, after the AT, um, I was using a hammock air tarp, amazing tarp. Wish I could change a couple things about it. And we, uh, we kind of talked. I was like, hey, pitched him an idea. Can we turn the corners here? Can we make it wider here? Can we do this up top? And uh, he's like, well, let me send you something, see if it's, you know, kind of what you're, what you're needing. Yeah. And it was great. And I, I made some more tweaks, sent it back to him. I was like, if you could cut this here and make the doors this way. And it, a product came out of this that I absolutely love. It's literally my tarp. Okay. And it's great. And it has all the coverage and everything that I've ever wanted in a DCF tarp. Yeah. So um, we... Uh, he released it. Uh, he made it. I mean, I didn't touch it. I just said, can you do this, this, and this? And it was a really big success for him. He sold out in, I think, three days with this tarp. Wow. And that was a whole spool of Dyneema. Wow. <laughs> which I won't go into details, but you have to buy a certain amount of Dyneema to even, you know, be a vendor for Dyneema. Totally. It's, it's a big, complicated yeah, process. Yeah, it's, it's a weird thing about. that, like, anybody, anybody out there that knows any cottage gear companies, it's, like, been this big discussion for, like, the past two years. Like, there's some people that really can't stand Dyneema because of that. There's some people that, like, <laughs> want to get into it. it. It's weird. Once you start, like, talking to a lot of cottage ve gear vendors, it's that, that discussion always tends to, like, weave its way into, <laughs> like, just the whole right, fact yeah. of, of all that crazy stuff. So, yeah, that's pretty cool, though. Um is so is that the only thing that, that you've helped develop or are you working on anything else with anybody that was really the only thing and like i said that got spurred from being in a really really bad storm on the top of uh i want to say it was madison yeah up in the white mountains i was <laughs> it was a bad night it was a really bad night and i just i wish i had that light af tarp that night because yeah. i got i got soaked i woke up at five in the morning and just said screw it and i got back on trail it was one of those days i'm sure you had them too so many <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and i think a lot of people don't understand that that feeling of okay well i guess i'm not getting any sleep tonight yeah. i don't think a lot of people have experienced that and they don't know really where i'm coming from when i tell this story but it was it was a bad night and i think with that tarp everything would have been resolved to the point where i would have got at least some sleep right yeah, it, it, it's fun, man. Whenever I first got into doing a lot of this, like making videos and stuff, um, you know, one was I wanted to find a way to give back because I always like I was inspired by people to go out and hike. And so when I got off the trail, you know, I, I told this story a million times. I went through post-trail depression. I had a random GoPro that I had bought because I thought I was going to start filming things. I didn't know what I was going to film. So I just started <laughs> making videos and putting them up online because it was a way for me to deal with post-trail depression. But whenever I first got into it, I was working in an outfitter and I've always been a big gear geek. I love design. I love figuring, I love going out and breaking something and figuring out what is wrong with something and then tweaking, like, right? Like I think a lot of like right. gear junkies or a lot of people that are into backpacking gear, hiking gear, or camera gear, like love making tweaks and love doing stuff. Yeah. So I always wanted to help like develop products. My, my dream for a long time was like, well, I'll get hired by a company and then I can like, I, I'll just be a prototyper. I'll just, that'll be my job. Like I'll go. I would love that. Right. Yeah. Well, I thought that for a long time too. <laughs> and then <laughs> I've worked at an outfitter and uh, like I was, I was putting in applications and stuff. And this is right when I started the YouTube channel, I was putting in applications at Osprey, Big Agnes, uh, Black Diamond, like just putting in a random resume and being like, I hiked the AT. I have been into outdoors my whole life. I consider myself a gear geek. I just started this YouTube channel. I'm looking for a job to just be a prototyper. And you know, they all like, Haha, whatever, whatever kid, like laughing yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, get out of here, right. And then, you know, over the years, I've always like, I've never wanted to take sponsorships or anything. But one thing that I've always wanted to do is help develop something. I've always told people like, if you want to send me something and like, let me destroy it and tell you what's wrong with it, like I am always down for that. Like you don't have to pay me. I don't want any money for it. But like, if you want to send me something and let me destroy it and tell me where you went wrong on it, I'm totally down for that. So yeah, I've I've got to do that over the last handful of years too. And then this past year, um, finally just got to the point using so many packs over the years, like just going through packs left and right. 
and like finding things I like, things I don't like, and finally just getting to the point where I reached out to a handful of people and said, hey, I want to design a pack. If I, and the conversation for me always starts, I just wanna, can you make me a one-off? You're a cottage gear company, you make custom stuff. If I give you all these specs for this pack, can you build it for me? Had a couple companies that wanted to do it, but weren't 100% committed, and then finally found somebody that wanted to do that and then spent the last year kind of developing tweaks and making changes on a pack and that pack's going to get like released in a month which is a super like i'm sure you felt the same way like that tarp coming out being like oh so like excited. this is a yeah. thing that i made like i yeah. designed this and now yeah. people are going to get it yeah. it's it's a really wild feeling when that when that it's, happens yeah um so yeah. you don't or do you have any thoughts of like reaching out to anybody else and maybe working on something do you have any other little like I mean, things that are kind of annoying you right now about a piece of gear that you want to go out and play with no not not right now i mean i would love to have a trekking pole company reach out to me but i, I still haven't found my trekking pole yet i i've been through lakey i've been through um, black diamonds literally every model of black diamond i just yeah i i'd, I'd be open to it i'd totally be open to working with somebody yeah. Um, but all the gear that I use, I'm so particular about, and it just works for me. And I'm I'm really hesitant to change it unless it's not it's completely not working. Right. So for everyone that's watching, that makes sense. what is what is the number one like for me? And I I say it so much in my videos. It's efficiency. And when I say that, I think some people think like, oh, well, you're too worried about hiking fast and efficient. Like slow down, enjoy. It. But that's not what it is. It's efficiency is in like, kind of what you said, like. I want to make sure that at night I'm going to get sleep. Like at the end of the day, yeah. when I go to put my tent up, I don't want to have to screw with a bunch of poles. I don't want to have to screw with a ton of stakes, different parts. Like I want something that I know that I can just slap on the ground, put a pole in, go to sleep. Like end of the story. But I, and most people are like, well, a tarp. But I like a fully enclosed. I like a bathtub because I've been in those times where I've been flooded out because I didn't have a bathtub. Yeah. I've been in those times where I've gotten eaten to death by mosquitoes because I didn't have a net. So that's a big thing for me. What, what would you say is the biggest, is it weight? Is it efficiency? Is it just overall design and feel? Like what's your biggest thing? It's, for me, I don't need a lot of bells and whistles on my gear. The, the simpler, the better, and the more reliable, obviously the better yeah. for me as well. So if you can get simplicity and reliability in one product, that's all I need. I've learned to not be so, I mean, I'm mindful about the weight that I carry. You could consider me ultralight if you want, whatever. It's under 10 pounds. But that doesn't really mean anything to me. If, if it's simple and if it packs in, you know, real easily and I can just get up and get on the trail in the morning, then that works. If it's going to bring me over 10 pounds, that's not going to really make me lose any sleep. You, you, you said packs in. Are you a horizontal packer or a vertical packer? I am a vertical oh. pack, I think. Are you? I think. You? you might have to clarify right, so, that. So like, I might not know what you're So you got about. a tent, right? Or, or a tarp in, in your <laughs> yeah. case. Do you right. put it in the pack horizontally, or are you putting it in there vertically? I put it vertically. Really? Yeah. So the quilts the quilts are at the bottom. They're sticking straight up, but they're side by side. Okay. So I, I layer everything the whole way up and then squish everything And you got enough room to fill the sides and stuff? See, I've I've always been yeah. a I've always been a horizontal stacker. So I want to put like huh. quilt at the bottom, and then next on top of that is like my thermal stuff, so I can grab it quick. And then next on top of that's my food, and then on top of that's the tent. Yeah, I'm I'm that way. I'm that way. Yeah, because yeah. I, I I'm I'm a big like efficiency is like I get to camp even like stopping during the day. Like if I'm gonna stop during the day, take a break, eat lunch, I want to like open up my pack, and the first thing I grab out is actually my tent. But the reason it's my tent is because usually, especially if I'm on the East Coast, it's got some sort of condensation from the night before. So I know the first thing I need to do, if I stop for lunch and it's like sunny or windy, I take it out, I can hang it. Next thing I grab is my food. Or if my tent's dry, I take it out and I use it as a pillow as I, <laughs> as I lay back yeah. and kick my feet Oh, up. there you yeah. go. That's good. That's really yeah, good. Man. So that's a big... See, my situation my situation's a little mm. different because my tarp is always... You know the thing that's probably going to be wet if something's going to be wet. It's going yeah. to tarp. So sure. in a hammock situation, I leave that on the outside in the mesh, and then my hammock is actually enclosed in a compactor bag. Oh. Keep that dry because that's always yeah. dry. So it's 
I'm I'm trying to switch to a tent this year just to kind of get my yeah I, I really want to switch to a tent I want to prepare for I want to do a tent hike of the PCT um, and I have no idea what I'm doing I'm going back to beginner level <laughs> camping you know what I, mean? I have no idea I camp it on slope ground I got to think about now I just hang on two trees and be done with yeah. it but yeah my whole packing situation needs to change for that tent to happen. So we'll see how that all plays out. But I'd like to do it this year. I'd like to start. Some are, are you going uh, tension or trekking, or trekking pole or, or freestanding? Trekking pole. Yeah. We'll do trekking pole. Nice. I had the whole freestanding thing. It's it, it's great. It is. Sometimes I miss having safe. a freestanding tent. Okay. Well, that's good to know. I mean, you know, there's just, there's, there's certain situations where I, I think the biggest thing with freestanding tents for a lot of people watching is like, the thing people have to keep in mind is trekking pole tents, yes, are lighter. They are more simple to set up, which is a big thing for me. But you definitely deal with condensation. Like single wall tents just get condensation. It's just, it's going to happen. It's not, it, you're never going to get away from that. Um, yeah. So that is one downside because, you know, it, it's just something you have to deal with and you have to know that you're going to have to dry your tent out during the day, which is why for me, it's like, I got to have that horizontal tent so I can pull it out first. I want something that's super lightweight, super simplistic, uh, that doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles. And then it also sucks. Sometimes I miss like on a real nice night, whenever say it's, there's still bugs out, but I want to look at the stars. I know it's not going to rain. I can't take the fly off. Right. So yeah, I can't look at the stars, which that's a big, bummer like that's one thing i don't like but for me i'm willing to take the efficiency of being able to dry it out fast being able to set it up quick over the comfort level of like not dealing with condensation not getting more airflow so it's it's like this weird trade-off i think that there's a lot of people out there that are probably watching it i think that as you hike more as you spend more time on trail it's just something like you kind of decide am i do I want comfort or do I want efficiency? Like what makes more sense to me? Because for me, it's, it's about like, I like hiking. Like that's why I hike from sun up to sundown. Like I will hike all the way to 6 PM. I don't stop early. Not because I'm trying to get in a bunch of miles just because I love to hike. I love it. That's same with me. I'm more of a hiker than a camper. Yeah. And then on that, like I love wielding a camera. I like shooting. I like being able to tell a story, take photos. So I'm willing to, enjoy that more without enjoying like I'll, I'll take comforts away to add like the things that i really want to do while i'm out there right. so i think it's it's something that kind of everybody figures out as they put more as they put more uh time on the trail in but hammocking man is something that i still we did that video last year oh, yeah God, that was almost two years ago now it was almost two years ago yeah i was just thinking about that before wow. the stream you know yeah. what's funny is that video tons of people still watch that video all the time i'll never understand why that video <laughs> like it did what it did like, yes i i will never understand that in a million years it's probably because you're in it it's not because i'm in it like you take me yeah, out of it I highly just, doubt i'm gonna take like the youtube editor and cut <laughs> right. the ends off of it and just to have it you um but i still i can just i can't get into hammocking i can't do it there's so much in me that just like says no <laughs> It's definitely, like we said before, it's definitely a, a learning curve, and it's not for everybody. Yeah. But, the, you know, I have a lot of, like I said in that video, I have a hard time sleeping on the ground. And, you know, it just might be the uh, Thermo, Thermarest X-Therm Neo Air cut, the mummy cut that's affecting me, uh, uh, you know, badly. I, maybe I just need a thicker I, pad. I yeah, don't know. I saw you on that pad. It, get the large, man. Oh, you gotta yeah, get, you, you see got, the Yeah, you got to get it wider and longer. <laughs> that's the key. Because I'm a tosser yeah. and turner, and I use the mummy cut, but I've I've I never fallen off, okay. never fallen off my pad. I've been using it for years. It's like that is my go-to pad. If I could somehow put a hammock, attach it to my trekking poles, that would be the number one solution to me. Ooh, that'd be nice. As soon as someone figures that out, cottage vendors, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> he just he just put that out there for anybody watching that wants yeah <laughs> that wants to develop a new product. This is your man. <laughs> so um, one thing I did want to talk to you about on the creation side of it, not just the gear geek, because I know you're a big gear geek. I am too. Like, so that's really what I wanted to talk to you was about gear.
But, um, you know, I spent all of last year making a film, a documentary. Um, and then I know that you recently, and what it was just like the last month, right? Uh, you put out yeah. um, a, a documentary of sorts on YouTube um, with basically you, you kind of took a lot of your footage and kind of like reworked it. And uh, so how did that come about? Why, why did you want to, I guess, do that first off? I wanted to do that to tell a story that I don't think I portrayed during the vlog of the AT through hike. I wanted to tell somebody that was in my position before I started my through hike that no matter where you are in life, you could be at a stable job. You could have your retirement ready to go. You could be married, wife, kids, everything, have a house, you know, the American dream. Sure. You don't necessarily, you're not necessarily going to be happy with that American dream. There's some people out there that that's not good enough for mm. them. And I wanted to tell the story from a depression side of things because I honestly, like I, I brought up earlier before we uh, started talking, but I didn't know how bad I was, how depressed I had become until about two months on the trail. When I just started, I'll, I'll be honest, I'll say it in front of everyone, I started breaking down literally every day about the stupidest things. I could see a cemetery. I could see, you know, just go walking into town. Just, you know, how you can, on the AT, you usually start above the town. You can kind of overlook Every it. Every single time. That would set me off. Just random, random things would set me off. And the depression got so bad. And I wanted to tell that story. It's like, if you're, de if you're not happy with something, do something about it. There's nothing stopping you from doing something about it. Just get out and do what you want to do. I've wanted to hike the AT for about, I think I started talking about it two years before it ever happened in the, in the videos that I was producing and just everything that happened and everything that got resolved more importantly on the trail was the story that I was trying to portray. Do you feel like one, do you feel like doing, because this has become like a, a, a reoccurring theme today. Um, did you suffer from post-trail depression? Are you suffering? Do you have post-trail depression now? Do you think it's affecting you in any way? I had I had very minor post-trail depression. I can honestly say I've been happier since I got home. Not saying I wasn't happy on trail. I was super happy sure, sure. on the trail. But there hasn't been – I mean, there's been off days, I'll be honest. That, you know, man, I wish I was out on the trail with my buds. Like everybody has that. Every hiker out there has right. it if they really like backpacking. But I think overall, my happiness level raised 100%. I can honestly say that I'm happy to be alive and I'm happy to have made it through that tough time. Sure. And I think a lot of people, based on the uh, the AT documentary that I released, just not even in the comments, but emails, they have they got my email and just said, hey, man, your video really hit close to home and I'm planning my AT through hike. That – that I, mean, I can't tell you, Darwin, how many times I've read that same email from people. There, there are people out there that are far worse than me sure. that need to do something in their life to change sure. it. And I think that that message right there was worth every single minute that I put into that document. You no, know, I got a lot of the same stuff when four years ago I made a video that, like, basically, I, I always I claim that it's what like started all. Like, it's the reason you and I are talking. I, I made a video called "How the AT Ruined My Life." Where at the, yeah, I saw it. At the yeah. time, it was tongue in cheek. Like I, I was just meaning it. Like I, I needed a video to shoot. I had nothing to shoot at the time. I was doing gear videos every week, and I kind of like ran out of stuff to talk about. Like I don't have anything left to talk about, <laughs> right? Because I hadn't went to do a, a next hike, and um, I just went out to the trail. Uh, and all the credit goes to my wife. She told me to do it. Like just go out to the trail, turn the camera on, and just talk, talk about whatever. And I had suffered post trial depression really bad. Like, really, really bad. And for me, it was weird. Something I don't think I've ever really talked about is, like, the reason we went to do the AT was because I was a bit depressed. And I was, like, kind of unhappy with normal everyday life. I was unhappy with kind of the hustle and bustle of the 9 to 5. Um, not really finding a place, right? And I had a couple businesses right. that didn't work out. So I went out there to be like, all right, well, this will be a new start. And I can, like, refresh my life and have something completely different. And I got that, as you know, like when you're out there, it's just like 
wow, like you're just, you're completely reborn yeah. into like a different person. And then I had to get off the trail early because of all the things that happened to me, getting Lyme disease, breaking a tooth and having a loved one die. And then it was just like depression, just like punched me in the face harder than it did before I had gotten out there. So when I made that video, at the time I didn't know it because I was like, ah, oh, it's tongue in cheek. The AT ruined my life. Ha 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 ha. But what that did was it kind of set things in motion of understanding that like it, it one, it, it might have saved my life, right? Like going out there and being reborn, like who knows if I wouldn't have done the AT, like what I would have ended up doing. Um, who knows? And this is deep, but like we're getting deep, folks. Um, who <laughs> knows? Like if I, I've been married for going on 14 years, like who knows if like that would have went further than, you know, we might have killed each other like being in the you know having this house and having careers and stuff so a it like i feel like it saved my life but it did kind of ruin my life in a way to where it made me think about things differently and it, it completely changed me as a person and i experienced the same thing of what you're talking about so many people still today four years later people will send me emails messages saying like i watched your video and i hardcore connected to it or the vice versa, somebody will send me an email and say, I went out and did the AT this year. And it's all because I watched that video that you made called How the AT Ruined My Life. And I think it's so important for people to A, like you said, just do something about it. Like if you're depressed, if you're not happy with what you're doing, and it's it's scary as hell. It's scary to jump off like what we did. Like you didn't really do like you didn't go as crazy. Like you, you still came back to like the life that you had. Like we literally jumped yeah. off the deep end. Like we got rid of I know. everything. Right. We just took off and it's, we've been kind of on this path for the last five years, this trail, if you will. Um, yeah. And it's terrifying to do it. And like to, to look out to everybody out there, if you have that thought, A, yeah, it's terrifying to do it. But once you do it, it becomes easy. It becomes, it's just, it, it's jumping into the unknown and it's what you don't know. And that what people don't know tends to scare the hell out of them. And it scared the hell out of me. And, you know, but doing it, you never know what's going to come from. It. And if you fail, if it doesn't work out, like, okay, like pick up the pieces, go back to what you were doing, try something different, but it can totally change your life. And you can totally go down a completely different path that you never thought you were going, going to go down. And then you could be sitting on the internet chatting with people for, going on two and a half hours <laughs> i mean that's what happens I was, yeah i was gonna say you got 40 more minutes darwin <laughs> 40 more minutes uh if somebody left a comment they're like go for four hours a day and i'm like no <laughs> so so yeah man i think that the trail is really special in that aspect of like it can do the weirdest things for people whether it's give them depression <laughs> or take it away from them or just inspire right. them to do super creative things and like would you i know that you had planned on vlogging your hike when you went out there if 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 you did you know that you wanted to do some sort of a document did you know that you wanted to do that or would you say that the trail kind of brought that out of you the trail brought it out of me i had no interest or plan to i mean i saw i saw dixie's documentary um you know, she had three of them from her triple sure. crown. I was like, oh, that's cool, but I'm not going to do that. But I wanted to tell the story to try to help someone that might be in my position. Well, what I like with what you trial. did is, and like this isn't for anybody watching, this isn't to uh, dog on anybody else, but like a lot of people will, will do their, their hike and they'll do their vlogs and then they'll just cut them all together and then call it a documentary. It's just a, it's an extended cut of all those videos. So you're not watching episode to episode, but what I yeah, like that you yeah. did is you, you took it and then you added to it and you put other stuff on there and you won, you, you winged a story into it. And that's what I found impressive about what you did. Um, and like hats off because like, that. I think that again, like not dogging anybody, but I'd love to see that more. It's like, it's kind of what Elena and I were talking about is she was able to create something of like, I've already done it. And now I want to give my thoughts looking back at what I did and how it changed me and, and what it did for me and how I can hopefully inspire somebody else. So I really dug that aspect of yours. 
a lot. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Um, so going forward, do you plan on doing any anything else long format? I mean, I, this is something I've been asking a lot of people because I've spent five years kind of telling my story and, you know, making videos about me and the stuff that I'm doing. And then in the last year, I was really woke up to be like, you know what, like, I'm ready to kind of shift gears and go somewhere else with it and like, see if I can start telling someone else's story and something else. Do you have any other plans now that you've done that on doing any other long format stuff or other storytelling? If it happens, it happens. I'll, I'll stick with that, that answer. Um, I'm always doing, you know, vlogs, uh, whatever trip I'm on, not only, not, a, not to just throw them on YouTube, but like we talked about earlier to look back on them and see where you've come. Totally. So if it happens, it happens. We'll just go with that answer. Yeah. Not, 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 uh, not planning on going out to produce a, a, a full length documentary film on a full length. Not, no, <laughs> <laughs> no plans. I'll leave that to you. Yours are, yours are great. Oh, thanks, yours are great for Appreciate me. It. <laughs> it, it was, yeah, it's, it's funny. Like I thought it was an exercise for me. I was like, I've wanted to do this for a long time. So I'm going to go out and do it. I'm going to put myself through hell. I'm going to spend an entire year making it and get it out of my system. <laughs> But I have a ridiculously, like, uh, hardcore addictive personality. So it did the opposite. <laughs> so we're now, like, that's all I can think about is, like, ooh, I got to make another film. Like, I want to make another film and another film and another film and another film. So it's ridiculous, man. Well, I I really enjoyed the way you did your AT documentary. Or not not your documentary, but your, your vlog. Oh. Whatever you want to call it. I know you're not oh, a vlogger. Oh, I'm not a vlogger. Right. You're not. You hate I that hate word. It. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I was actually really disappointed that this whole, I know nobody wants to talk about it, but the COVID kind of sure, got sure. you off there. Um, I appreciate everything you've done with the hiking community as far as getting the information about the COVID stuff out there to everybody. Oh, thanks, man. There was a lot of disconnect, like you said before. But, man, I didn't want those videos of yours to end. I wish you, I know you were only going to do a section. Thank you. But I was like, man, maybe he'll change his mind and just go the whole way and then this COVID thing. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. And, you know, again, like that's influence from doing the film, like doing the film. I was like, well, I definitely want to tell other people's stories and tell other stories. But I think that if I just do that, like people don't want to watch that, like people want to watch me do something. So how can I do it? But with me and I was lucky enough to have something like a five year anniversary where, where I was able to go relive that hike and and tell that right. story. But yeah, going forward, man, that's that's my plan with all of my stuff is is putting more That's emphasis cool. on that and interviewing other people and showing this trail community that we all get to experience. But I think that there's a big disconnect with people online who, I guess, and it's not, it's something that I talked about a little bit with getting off the trail this year. And I think when you go into your first hike, when you're planning for your first hike, a lot of people have this perception of I'm doing this for myself. I'm going to go get lost in nature. I'm going to get away from people. I'm going to be in the wilderness. And they don't think about the other huge aspect of it, which is people. Yeah. It's community. It's something that even though like we can drill it into people's heads and tell them about it a million times, people just don't anticipate that. And then everyone I know that's ever right. come back from a through hike has like, has all, they've all said like, what I wasn't expecting is what I got, which was more of a community versus me just being lost in the wilderness. Um, exactly. And especially on the AT. Yeah. yeah. So my goal is to kind of like show that side of it more and show the fact that like, know that like, this is going to change your life, whether it's for the good or the bad, but this is going to completely turn you into a different person, turn your mindset into a different person. It's not because of you. It's not because you found yourself because I don't think anybody really finds themselves out there. We all just find that we're dumb and hungry. Um, <laughs> but it, it makes you find a connection with people. Uh -huh. It's all about that connection. Yeah, it really does. And then that, in turn, like makes you happier. It, it brings something out of you, whether that's creativity or happiness or or a lot of stuff. So, yeah. It's a different way of thinking. Yeah. Totally, man. Yeah, it, it's pretty wild. So, um, I guess to uh, to do the 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 classic quick fire questions that, uh, that I've been doing with everybody else. Um, you are, I know that you're not a cold soaker. Um, I'd like to try, it, try it at least a couple times. It, yeah. I I'm always down for trying. It'll ruin you, dude. Things. It's, yeah. it's awful until you have the night whenever like you're just completely bushed. 
you're starving and you got to do it and you eat it and you're like, you know what? This isn't that bad. Um, (laughs) And then you go down like a three year path of doing nothing but that. Um, So cooking wise, what is your go to meal on the trail? Like what if you had to eat one thing every night for an entire through hike, what would you do? People think I'm nuts, but man, I basically ate just um, north sides and spam. Spam? You're a I, spam I don't eater? know why. I love spam. Yeah. Spam. N- not even cooked spam. Just right out of the package. Yeah. Meat, meat, <laughs> pop. My wife's a spam <laughs> so, yeah, eater. I, I can't I could, do it. It's so good. <laughs> I eat it here. I'll, I'll eat it at home. Ugh. Just take it out of the package and eat it. Quit it. <laughs> I grew up like when I was a kid, I, I grew up pretty poor single mother and like all we what we ate all the time were those vienna sausages you know what i'm talking about oh yeah yeah yeah. ever since being a kid and having to eat those because of like just budget restraint like i refuse to eat any type of canned meat i just can't do it it's hard <laughs> enough eating like canned tuna <laughs> i like that too <laughs> so so nor what's your, what's your favorite nor what's your go-to nor uh i like the fettuccine uh, or no alfredo Alfredo. Oh, so you do the pastas. Fettuccine Alfredo. I do the pastas, oh. yeah. With just water, no milk. It tastes fine to me. Oh. It might gross people out, but I yeah. was that and um Buffalo uh Buffalo tuna, Buffalo chicken yeah. packets. Have you ever had the Korean barbecue oh. one? That's got like Yeah, oh, yeah, I got this too. So yeah. good. That's that's like my favorite. <laughs> right? Yeah, absolutely. Um okay, so what is your what is your shoe of choice? What are you What are you currently hiking in right now? You know what? I took your idea, your recommendations on the Ultra Olympus, and I love them, but I think they were too high for me because I kept rolling my ankles. So I went to the Temps, and I absolutely hated them. Despite Did what you really? Onish, yeah, despite what Onish and uh, uh, they, I I like the Lone Peaks. I like the Lone Peak series. I wasn't a big fan of the fours, but the four point fives are really showing promise for my foot everybody's different totally. i'm not going to say they're the greatest shoe in the world but for me they're, they're pretty good so far nice it, so i guess the same question i've been asking everybody is just because people are always interested toe box wide or or narrow my toes are wide Your toes are wide yeah. too okay uh, the rest of my feet are the rest of my feet are narrow but my toes whoosh, yeah. see that's why i do the temp over the lone peak it's just because it's got that wider toe box for for just more splay of my gigantic toes yeah yeah right on um so pack of choice what uh i know that you went through a couple different packs on the at didn't you didn't you go through like two different packs i went through went through two um that was mainly because i needed more um more volume okay for winter i started february 23rd uh so i had a z packs arc haul it was great there's some things i don't like about it but nothing major um but Pack of choice, it's got to be light AF packs all day. Their shoulder straps are just amazing. Yeah. That, that's really what draws me to them. They're, they're so comfortable on my body. That's, that's how I feel about Waymark's packs. Their shoulder straps are yeah. just like, it, it's like a cloud sitting on, on your shoulder. Yeah. So are they real Are they real thick too? Yeah, yeah. Mark uses like this this like crazy 3D mesh that's like super spongy. Mesh, so yeah. just like it just okay. forms to your shoulders versus sitting yeah. on your shoulders. Yeah, that's what I dug about them. The little, the curve on the light AFs are, it just, yeah, it I've, hits I've all the right that. places. Yeah. I don't know what the deal is, but yeah. yeah. I don't think I'll probably, I know, I sound like I'm a poster child for light <laughs> AF at this point, but man, I don't think I'll ever change packs. Hashtag. As long as he's in business. Hashtag not sponsored? <laughs> I'm not sponsored right on <laughs> that's that's honesty folks that's he likes it because he likes it <laughs> i like it. um so in one i'm going to tack on one because i know that you have been having a little bit of a difficulty in coming off of uh me and tip taps question camera have you figured out what camera that you actually like using because didn't you you picked up the m50 right didn't you have like a hard time with it I did yeah i did i cannot just i <sighs> I suck at cameras. I suck at mirrorless cameras. I have it. It's here. But I'm using that guy back there. Uh, we're going to use it this weekend. I'm going to try to knock out a 20-mile day conditioning assignment for myself. Um, it's a Sony AX43. So there's a gimbal in the lens. If you, if, you, if you shake it, the lens actually bounces up and down with you. Okay. It's pretty cool. 
So it's a camcorder instead of a mirrorless. It does 4K and all that stuff. It has depth of field, nice depth of field. It's not a mirrorless, but I think with all the lens switching, I can just, I'm a point and shoot guy. I don't want to, I'm an auto guy. That's why you got to use one lens. I like, I, just use like a, a 24 or a 35. Well, well, I was, I was using, I was using the, uh, this little guy, the, I don't know what you, that was a 22 millimeter the lens, 22, this little guy right that's here. That's such a good little yeah, lens. Yeah, but then I realized it doesn't have image stabilization. So I had to use the stock lens because I don't want to drop $700 on a real lens. And you know what? I'm just like, for that, I'll just get this camcorder. Uh, Cause I've, I've used Sony camcorders in the past and they've worked out fine all this time. So I figured, you know what? Let's try it. If it doesn't, I got 30 days. Nice. Right on. Well, good luck with that. Good luck with that. The search on Thanks. for the camera. I'm I'm always like on my own search. It's I, like Canon yeah. just released the specs of that new camera they're putting out, the R5. Which yeah, is just like, and those look really good. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's that's the. I just didn't want to. I didn't want to wait anymore. They're running, and who knows what that's gonna cost. Yeah, I, I've I've been saying like you know I'm definitely not made of money or anything, but like I at this point like I. They just put the pre-order up. They don't have to tell me the price. If the pre-order comes up with the camera, it's like it's getting pre-ordered. I'll deal with it later. But <laughs> it's just, yeah. Well, and you have your you have your workflow down. You have it, you know, hanging up here. I don't know where to put it. <laughs> I I'm used to carrying it on a monopod, and if you carry a four pound camera on a monopod, you're gonna realize your hand really hurts by the end of the day. Right. Absolutely. You just can't. Just can't keep it. Well, right on, man. Um. Thanks for jumping on here and chatting and geeking out. It's yeah, always man. fun to geek out with you about you. gear and like we got to do some more collaboration gear videos and, and like you share want. some opinions and stuff. And yeah. All right, man. Totally down. All right, bud. Me yeah. Thanks so much and stay safe. And oh, by the way, uh, you inspired me this past weekend to get out for an overnight on the trail because I saw your video where you oh, yeah? you went out from your house. So I did the same thing. I Stealth camp. Yeah, yeah man. COVID stealth. Yeah, it was good stuff yeah. for sure. It was much needed. So everybody out there. I'm sure you got some place that you can leave out of your out of your back door, front door. Maybe it's a block away. Go get out, at least for a day hike, if not like an overnight for a quick stealth camp somewhere. So it's definitely worth it. Good for the soul. Well, bud. Get on your deck. Yeah. Put your tent out on the deck. Absolutely. Why not? Yeah, get out there. All right, bud. Thanks so much for jumping on, and uh, we'll talk to you later. All right, Darren. How to blast. Thank you. See you, bud. All right, folks, so big thanks to Frozen for coming on, and that concludes our three guests. So um, it's been pretty awesome. Sorry for all of the, 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 the problems with the feed. Uh, it looks like TipTap killed the feed all the way from New Zealand, and then Frozen actually fixed it uh, <laughs> from where he's at in, in, in Pennsylvania. So... Um, Somebody said, bring Snuggles in sometime for a short time. Yeah, she, you know, it's funny. People always want me to bring Snuggles in. My wife, by the way, for everyone that's watching for years, when I say Snuggles, people are like, is that your dog? Is that your teddy bear? No, it's my wife. My wife's trail name is Snuggles. Um, she doesn't really dig being on camera. That's why she's not in a lot of my stuff. There's a handful of things out there. If you go watch my Timberline trail through hike from last year, she hiked that with me. She's all on that. But, um, but yeah, it's, it, it's always, always fun whenever people bring her up because I pressure her all the time to come hang out with me, sit on camera and do some sort of a Q and a, but she is literally never interested. But one of these days, maybe we'll pressure her in to getting on here and, uh, and jumping in and talking with us. So I'm going to answer a handful of questions. You guys got me at two hours and 33 minutes. Ugh. Um, I'm going to answer a handful of questions, so if you have a question for me, uh, go ahead and throw it up here in the chat box. I'll try to answer it as quickly as I can. And then um, right now I'm putting all of my guests together for next week, so I'm pretty excited about that. As long as we are all still in some sort of a quarantine and trapped inside and you guys need inspiration, I'm going to keep doing these on Tuesdays because I've really enjoyed doing them, enjoyed getting to talk to people, chat about different things. Um, and, and yeah, and hopefully somehow keep you guys entertained and keep you from going nuts. So again, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them over here. I did want to give a quick shout out to early riser. I saw that he jumped in the chat a little bit ago whenever, uh, frozen and I were talking, what's going on ER. Um, 
we definitely need to do something at some point together. So reach out, buddy. Um, let's see. Someone said, how tall? How tall am I? I am 6'1". Um, I am 6'1". So someone also said, how bad is the condensation in the Altiplex? So as far as the three single pole DCF tents that I've used lately, which would be the, um, I guess the three that I've used from z -Pack, so the Hexamid Pocket Tarp, the Plexamid, which is what I used last year, and the Altiplex, I would say I get less condensation in the Altiplex over the others. And I think that that's because it has a taller peak. So it's got more room at the, uh, at the top of the tent for airflow. At least that's been my experience with it. Um, yeah, so I would say you still have condensation issues. You're always gonna have condensation issues with a single wall tent. But with the Altiplex, I feel like it's better, definitely better than the Plexamid and better than the Hexamid in my experience. Got a super chat um, from Brian that says, enjoyed the show, go the distance. Thanks, Brian, man. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for the super chat. Much appreciated. Um, yeah, thanks, bud. Let's see what else we have. Um, Somebody said, I'm 6'5". I assume that tall people generally don't have the experience to recommend gear. Yeah, more excuses. Um, don't really know what that means. 6'5 um, uh, is, you know, I would say a tent like the Altiplex, which they made for taller hikers. 6'5, if in a really good, perfect pitch, I think you'd be good in it. If you're on a little bit of a slope, I think that something like the Altiplex might be a little bit of a pain still. You might still deal with sidewall issues. The biggest tent, single person tent that I've seen that's made, if you don't mind using cell nylon, would be the Light Heart, um, was it So Long? I think it's called the So Long. It's a very roomy tent for taller people, so you might check that out. Unfortunately, they do not make a DCF version. I wish that they would make bigger gear for bigger people. That's kind of the problem in the outdoor industry, I feel like. Um, let me see, what else do we have here? Any good book recommendations? Yeah, uh, definitely check out Thirst from my first guest, Heather Anderson. Definitely check that book out. It's really, really good stuff. Um, check out the book from my guest from last week, which is Legend. Uh, and he wrote a book called The Free Outside. I definitely suggest checking his stuff out and also check out a book from my guest from two weeks ago, which was Jennifer Farr Davis and her book Becoming Odessa. Definitely check those books out. They were very, very inspirational for me. Um, yeah, those would be my recommendations. I'm starting to fade. <laughs> um, somebody said okay. let's see got um, when you don't what do you do somebody said when you don't hang your bear bag what do you do with your food I usually set my um, bear bag right outside of my tent so I use a single pole tent if my pole is here, my bag usually sits right about here. So if I hear some sort of a critter or something like that moving around at night, I can just kind of like make noise and get the critter to run away. But if there's some other bigger animal that wants to come after my food, they're not gonna come into my tent. So that's where I usually set my food. Um, got a, another super chat from Brian Andrews. Brian says, just supporting you. Got home a few minutes ago and about to head back to play with my toys. Good seeing the live chats. Thanks, Brian, man, I really appreciate it. Thank you for the super chat. Hopefully you're doing well, brother. Um, let's see, somebody said, same for gear for shorter people. I wear an extra small pack and it's still too tall for my torso. Yeah, with something like that, you might want to reach out to some sort of 
uh, cottage gear vendor. So there are definitely some custom pack makers um, like White AF, like Waymark, like uh, Superior Wilderness Design that will make custom packs for people. Now, obviously you might have to pay a little bit more because it's a custom pack, but odds are you could probably get one of those companies to make you something that is custom just for you and just for your body shape. So that's what I would suggest doing for sure. Somebody said, ever consider writing a book yourself? No, not really. I make a lot of video media, a lot. Um, if you want to read whatever I would put in a book, you can watch basically five years of videos. So <laughs> um, my stuff is all visual and some audio. Uh, I've been on a ton of podcasts. I've told my story a million times. You know, I'm more interested right now in telling other people's stories and helping other people and giving back. That is my big driving force right now. So writing a book about me, not interested in it. Um, and as far as giving advice and stuff like that, I've been doing that for five years. Just got another super chat that came in from Brandon J. Brandon says, thank you. I appreciate the content. Thank you, Brandon. I really appreciate your super chat. And thanks for saying that. I love making content for you guys. It's, it's what drives me. It's why I've been doing it for five years. It's why I made a film last year. It's why I'm doing all the things that I'm doing this year, which I will be releasing soon. Um, I just love inspiring other people and making content. So thank you for following along and watching the content. I really appreciate it. Um, do you know cottage companies in Europe? That's a good question. Um, you can look into Adam Pax. Adam Pax is a um, is a pack maker, a cottage company that is based, I believe he's based out of Scotland. I could be wrong, but I think that he's based out of Scotland. So I would definitely check their stuff out because I've heard really, really great stuff about it. Um, any idea when the Appalachian Trail will be open again? No, no idea. Um, no idea at all. We will see. Let's see. Somebody said, can't wait for the Evolve. Me either. I've had an Evolve now since October, but I can't wait for Waymark to release that pack and get it in everybody else's hands so you guys can enjoy it like I've enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully it'll work out for you. Hopefully you'll like it. I really enjoyed getting to design a pack and then it'll be really awesome. Kind of like what Frozen was talking about, putting work into designing something and then watching it go out into the world and other people getting to enjoy it. So I'm pretty excited for the release as well. Got another super chat um, from Pedestrian0101. Says, I started the PCT this year and the virus shut that down. Uh, is it healthy that hiking is all I'm thinking about getting back to? Um, I don't know if it's healthy, but I know that it's pretty common. It's all I think about all the time. Even in the off season, even when I'm working on other stuff, I constantly think about being on the trail and hiking. So again, I don't know if it's healthy, but it's pretty normal, I would say. And I think that all of my guests today can definitely um, agree with that. It's just something that becomes a part of you. And once you start, it's something that you kind of can't stop thinking about. At least for me, it's totally been a... Um, it's been a horrible addiction <laughs> that has ruined my life. Let's see if we got some more questions. I love answering questions from you guys. Um, how awesome is the alpaca hoodie? I like it a lot. The only reason I'm not wearing it right now is because it's warmed up quite a bit. I'm actually wearing my alpaca beanie. Um, that The hoodie has kind of become like a security blanket for me. I wear it all the time. I wear it at night when we're just sitting around on the couch, eating dinner, watching a movie. Uh, I wear it out if it's a little bit chilly. Any chance that I can get to wear that thing, I wear it. I absolutely love that product. Um, it's one of probably, out of all, you know, usually I, I really talk about and love tents. I talk about packs, how much I love packs, but it's pretty rare that I really talk about clothing that I like, right? Like I've been hiking in the same shorts for years. Most of the time I hike in the same shirt, but you know, that sweater is something that I just, in the last five years, out of all the 
different gear and stuff that I have used out of all the different clothing that I've used, I probably enjoyed that sweater more than anything else. It's become like a part of me. So, and again, you know, hashtag still not sponsored. Uh, they didn't sponsor me to say that. I bought mine. Um, they didn't even give it to me. So um, I just really, really enjoy it. Whenever I really enjoy a product, I like talking about it. Uh, ooh, uh, Melody Hikes, a quick shout out. Uh, said, you've inspired me, Darwin. I've made my own YouTube channel. I can't wait to see you hike the Great Divide Trail. Awesome. Congrats on that. Everybody should definitely go check out Melody Hikes, um, go check out her YouTube channel. That's awesome. Um, I would love to follow along and see some of your stuff sometime. So thank you so much. I'm glad that I can inspire you to start creating content as well. Somebody asked, this is one that I am very interested in answering because it's something that I've been wanting to talk about. Somebody asked, have you thought about crowdfunding your public lands film? Um, I've thought about it, and for anybody that doesn't know what I'm talking about, I've talked about it on some podcasts. I've kind of talked about it here on YouTube. At the end of this year, I'll be going into production on a second film. Yes, I said second. If for some reason you don't know and you haven't heard me say it a million times, last year I shot a documentary film that is not my YouTube videos. It has nothing to do with anything that I've ever put on YouTube. It's a completely independent film that has nothing to do with my YouTube content. It doesn't even have any of my YouTube content in it. Um, sorry, I really got to push that home. Uh, it really inspired me to want to start telling other stories and start doing more with um, film. So at the end of this year, I'm going to take my ear pods out. At the end of this year, I'm going to go into production on a second documentary film. It's going to be about the history um, and the exploitation of public lands. That's national parks, that's national scenic trails, that's national forest, uh, that's national or wilderness areas. That is every aspect of public lands. I'm a big advocate for public lands, always have been. So I want to deep dive into the history of public lands and produce a full documentary film on said subject. So um, the question was, have I thought about crowdfunding it? Um, I thought about it. We'll see what happens. I have some other projects coming up that I thought about maybe crowdfunding that are not the film, some other um, video projects that aren't specific to YouTube. So we'll kind of see how that goes. Right now, the plan for the public lands film is to get it funded by sponsors, um, by people that want to support it, just like we did with the last film. Um, and then also like, you know, I personally invest in everything that I do. So it funded by me, but that might be an avenue. We might go down for a distribution or something like that is having it crowdfunded. But thanks for saying that. Thanks for reaching out. Thanks for having that thought. Um, it's good to know that there's somebody that's at least interested in funding something like a big project like that. And everything that I do, I love to give back to public lands. So the film that I shot last year, uh, that's available for download if any of you are interested. Uh, we have raised over $13,000 for public lands from that film alone. So I would love to do something bigger, raise more money, give back more to public lands, and bring attention to protecting them, preserving them, and enjoying them. So that is the plan. Let's see if we have any other questions on here. I'll answer a handful more questions, and then, uh, then I'm going to call it, folks. Uh, more restrictions. Do I believe in more restrictions on public lands? Um, I don't necessarily believe in restrictions. I believe that people need to be educated on how to use public lands. People need to understand that right now and for quite a while, public lands have been horribly defunded and it takes a lot of money to go out and build trails that we all hike on. It takes a lot of money to reroute things over mountains. It takes a lot of money to maintain things like national parks, national forest, um, trailheads, signage, all of that. And there's a lot of people, I think, that use public lands regularly, whether they're using it for recreation or they're using it to exploit it and make money, whether it's through commercial work, whether it's selling products, whatever it is, that don't give back to public lands, that don't take a percentage and give it back 
to the public lands to make sure that we can all still continue to use it and to make sure that future generations can use it. If you want to hear me talk more about that, I was recently on a podcast called the Backpacking Experience Podcast. Did an episode that just came out on Sunday where basically we talked about protecting and preserving public lands, every aspect of public lands. And it's something that I really want to fight for going on, going forward um, with what I do. So if you want to hear me chat about that, I won't chat about it too much on here. Go check that podcast out. It's called The Backpacking Experience. It's only about an hour long, and it's me talking about how I really feel about what we need to do as a hiking community to protect public lands. So I got a couple of questions. How do we find the first film? Where can I download your AZT film? So the film is available on theoutdoorevolution.com. If you go over to my community tab right now, after you get done watching this, if you go over there, you can scroll down on the community tab and find when I posted about the film, you'll find a link. You can go on to Outdoor Evolution, you will find a tab that says Films, click Films, and it will allow you to download it from Vimeo. Go watch the film, tell me what you think. It's only 40 minutes long, um, and again, it's for a good cause. So check that out. All right, folks. I'm starting to lag again. I think that is going to be it. I think that we're going to call it for this week. Um, thanks so much for sitting here and chatting with me. You guys got me almost to three hours again. Ugh. Next time I'm not doing it. I'm not doing three hours. But thank you guys so much for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. Um, again, I'm going to be doing these every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern time with special guests answering questions. So if you dug this, uh, I guess give it a thumbs up. Um, go follow me over on my community tab. Go hit the notification bell so you can figure out when I'm gonna do another one of these. Go listen to that podcast I was recently on. Go watch the film that I spent an entire year making. If you want to see what I spent an entire year making um, and you wanna find out some more information on that. All right, guys, thank you so much, so, so much. Appreciate everybody's super chat. I appreciate people following along and sitting through all of this for almost three hours yet again. And folks, I love you. Take care of each other. Respect each other. Hopefully we'll all get back out on the trail soon. See ya.